at Lubbock, Texas, where an air show will be on display tonight. Texas Tech and SMU and the officials making sure there are plenty of footballs and plenty of air in those footballs, as you can expect. Plenty of passing tonight. It is college football Saturday. Tech and SMU coming up next. Talk about your spread offense. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Tonight, Graham Harrell leaps the high-scoring Texas Tech Red Raiders against the SMU Mustangs. And it's the first head-to-head -head meeting between the two most celebrated field generals of the all-fair in the air game plan. He's going to go the distance. At Hawaii, June Jones turned his QBs into national phenomenons. Now, he's about to turn the SMU Mustangs loose. Texas Tech Air Marshal Mike Leach is famous for producing three, four, even 500-yard passing games. And with last year's top NCAA receiver back and the nation's top active passer, tonight you may witness a record-breaking performance. June Jones and his SMU Mustangs take on the 12th-ranked Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Takeoff is next. Just 24 hours ago, like 70 parts of Texas, Lubbock underwater. Well, fortunately, a day later, you can't tell. This field was under two feet due to rain. From Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, it's Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki. And today, the SMU Mustangs, Conference USA take on the 12th ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. Well, they'll put it up early and often as one of the best in the nation. Graham Harrell faces true freshman Bo Levi Mitchell of SMU. And welcome to Lubbock, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Gary Reasons. And get ready because it is a classic confrontation between two of the best offensive minds in all of college football. No doubt about that. You've got June Jones here from SMU coming into Mike Leach's house. And both these coaches are tremendous offensive minds. They are pass first oriented coaches. And they really do. They run the show. And they're going to get the ball up in the air quite a bit today. And it's going to be pretty special. Now, June Jones, it's new for him because he's at SMU, new head coach this year. And he's got some change already. Pretty effective there. 250 yards passing last year, already in the first two ball games. 300, almost 400 yards of total passing. So look for that to go on. Now he's got a young freshman quarterback. He's turned the reins over to, but for him to have production, they've got to have great receivers. Emmanuel Sanders and Aldrick Robinson, both of them are capable receivers and with speed. Robinson, a 10, 200 meter guy, they're over 100 yards receiving last weekend. Well, all of us in the Big 12 last year were spoiled by what we saw from redshirt freshman Michael Crabtree. Obviously, he blew the rest of the nation away as well, becoming the first freshman to win the Bolitnikoff Award. Well, I'll tell you, when you got a big guy like him at 6'3", 215 pounds, he's an imposing threat against defensive backs. Really, he took this, this offense really to another level of Graham Harrell last season. It's a great year last year. This season, a little bit slow start, but he got a good ball this last weekend. Got an 82-yard touchdown reception from Graham, Graham Harrell. So if these two get in sync, it could be a great year again for Texas. Tech. With more on this matchup, let's head downstairs now and join the third member of our team, Emily Jones. Emily. Well, guys, that magical relationship between Harold and Crabtree is no accident. Tech coaches tell me the two spent countless hours up here over the summer in an effort to duplicate last season's performance. And also, Mike Leach tells me that the quarterback wide receiver duo is the closest both on and off the field he's had in his tenure. So definitely well connected both on and off the field, guys. All right, Emily. So the spread offense of Texas Tech, the number 12 team in the nation, the run and shoot of June Jones and SMU. Stick around. Should be a lot of fun. You know, hopefully we throw as many as we can, and uh, and I think both of us will probably try to throw it to our running back maybe instead of hand it to him. Not only do do we is it fun to run, it's fun to watch, and uh, and that's a byproduct of kind of what we do. We certainly can win with it. We've proven that we can everywhere we've been. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues in Lubbock. Two old foes from the old Southwest Conference get together, and one of the most memorable plays in SMU history, it took place right here in Lubbock, November 13th, 1982. Here was the Pony Express of Eric Dickerson, Lance McElhaney, Craig James and company, ranked number two in the nation at the time, came in with a 9-0 record. Victory over the Red Raiders, at least a tie for the Southwest Conference title, but in the second half, the Red Raiders scored 17 unanswered points to tie the game at 27. And with just 17 seconds left, the Ponies bid for a perfect season, a potential national title. It looked dim. That is, until the miracle on 4th Avenue 
Lane Smith bobbling the kickoff, but then firing to Bobby Leach. Races untouched down the sideline, 91 yards for the score. The touchdown led to the Mustangs to a 10-0 record. They went on to beat Pitt in the 83 Cotton Bowl, earning the nation's number one ranking. And I got a feeling this young man has heard about that just a few times. And that is Adam James, a redshirt freshman out of Salina, Texas, the son of all-time Mustang great Craig James. So we get ready for two old rivals. Stay with us in Lubbock. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues. It's the Mustangs, the Red Raiders, coming up next. College Football Saturday, all presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals, lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. And brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. Spectacular day in West Texas. About a six and a half, seven hour drive from Houston as the Red Raiders make their way out of the field and our thoughts and prayers with everybody in Texas, Louisiana, all those impacted by Hurricane Ike. Let's head downstairs, Emily Jones. Okay guys, well, Mike, you looking forward to playing a team uh, that likes to pass the ball as much as you do? Well, we're excited to play SMU. We're excited because it's a game, but it's always tough uh, when you play somebody that spreads it out a lot and they're well coached and uh, have a new sense of enthusiasm, so it should be an exciting game. Your first two games offensively, you've gotten off to a bit of a slow start. How do you avoid that today? Well, I just think we got to go out and play well, just uh, carry over what we did in practice. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Thanks. All right, Emily. Sell out as usual. That's how good it's been in the nine years under Mike Leach. Getting ready. They kick it away as SMU won the toss, elected to receive. It's Danny Corona, true freshman from Beaumont. And we are underway in Red Raider land. It's going to be Jesse Henderson. He'll stay right there about five, six yards deep. As SMU will have the football offensively to start the game. And I don't know about you, Gary, but I'm excited to see this young man. June Jones spoke of in great terms yesterday that the game is not too big for him. He doesn't panic. It, he's just never rattled, man. He's got a big league arm. That's the best part about it. And he won a state title last year, Division II 5A state title at Katy High School. So and, a and guy that a lot of people liked. Yeah, they like him a lot. And actually, he's getting better each and every week as more as he learns the system. Coach Jones knows how to develop quarterbacks, and he really likes Oliva. Single to the backfield. They're Myron Martin. Two to each side for Bo Levi Mitchell. And going deep over the middle and overshooting. It's picked off. In the second here, coming up with it. Charbonnet, the strong safety. And he takes it across the midfield strike. So a big time play for the strong safety of the senior out of the Woodlands right away. And he did have Terrence Wilkerson open between the hash marks. Well, he had a lot of time to throw the football back there. Definitely his offensive line gave him enough protection to do that. And he surveyed this Texas Tech defense with just a little errant throw. Perhaps the jitters and playing against a big crowd, a big audience, a little bit too much over that football. And then you see the safety coming across Charbonnet. It was a nice job of playing center field and finding that ball. Now get ready because Texas Tech will not take much time as they put two in the backfield. Don't see it all that often. But they've got both Batch and Wood to the backfield for Mike Leach to start the game. Down on the play fake. Does he want to go to Woods? He's got a number of sources out there. Taken in by guess who? Crabtree, and he's got the first down inside the 35 to the 33. So 16 catches for Michael Crabtree over the first two games. And people are saying, what's the matter? <laughs> Graham Harrell, second all-time behind Cliff Kingsbury in passing yardage here at Texas Tech. Just about 900 yards behind Kingsbury, so he should surpass that. And what a year last year. Threw for better than 5,700 yards. Yeah, and what he's done here at Texas Tech, you know, expecting he stays healthy, he's going to have all the records as a quarterback. Showing the blitz off the edge. Little pop over the middle. It's complete. Taken in by Detron Lewis, the sophomore from College Station. So good yardage, a high percentage play, almost seven. And our Liberty Mutual starting lineup. Huge group. I mean, a massive group compared to what they're facing on the front. And Reed on the left side. Converted tight end. Great story of the senior out of Dallas. You know, Shannon Woods gets the start, but you'll see two to each side usually in the spread offense, where SMU a lot of time bunches three, goes three and one. It'll be Crabtree, the motion man, and he'll take it on a direct handoff. Needs three for the first down. And is chopped down just shy of that at the 25. So it'll be third in the yard from there as SMU caught up with him a good lateral pursuit. 
Mustang start in a 3-3-5 three, three, uh, set. And they changed that late. Elise is their senior no set. And he's played the best over the first two games down low. Castro gets the late start. The young man, the freshman. And the regulars in the backfield. Brian McCann, a nice story. Their junior cornerback out of Oklahoma City. This is his third year as a starter. And it's a challenge for this SMU defense. They feel like they've got to rattle this quarterback somehow. But early in this ball game, it looks like Texas Tech doing a good job of just maintaining what they want to do. Is spread the ball around. Yeah, just trying to hang on to Shannon Woods because the fiddle is available. Gary, you know it best when you talk about the keys to the game for Tech. Yeah, our quiz knows keys to the game for Texas Tech. Basically, pitch and catch, offense production, throw that ball around like they do, and defensively with Coach Ruff and McNeil, just rough it up defensively. Be, be aggressive. That's what he'd like to see his defense do today. Texas Tech, 12 consecutive wins in this long series with SMU, and it's a fade corner of the end zone. Was he in bounds? No. Edward Britton got it, the junior from El Paso. But out of bounds, working against Brian McCann. Well, pretty good job here by the quarterback throwing it out there. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one single coverage. Look at the bottom right side of your screen. The ball's going to be thrown. Good adjustment there by Britton, but definitely out of bounds. And good coverage in the secondary also. Good job by McCann. He's got good size now. He's one of the bigger defensive backs at six feet, so he's going to be able to challenge these tech receivers. It'll be second and ten from the 18. 40-second clock is not impacted. Mike Leach and the Red Raiders, in fact, he, he thought a lot of teams would rush their way through the 40-second clock. Same pattern, different result, in and out of the hands that time for Britt. <laughs> they went right back to it. Yeah, right at McCann again. I think he's going to hold up okay. I think his size really helps him. Take a look at Britton here, who himself is just six foot, trying to work down that near sideline. He's going to go straight down the field and... This time the ball a little bit overthrown this time, a little bit outside, but he gave himself the chance to catch that football by staying inside a couple yards off the sideline. Last play before that, he was right down the sideline and could not have jumped. Opening two and a half minutes of the game, and now an early third down. The Tech at the SMU 18. Blitz coming up the middle, they pick it up. Middle of the field, just out of the reach as they were trying to get it to Crabtree. Yeah, and this is a good job here by SMU defensively. You know, Holton Tech inside the red area for three three plays, and now they're going to bring the field goal team on. So I think that June Jones and, and their defensive side of the football feel like they've kind of won something here, turn it over to Texas Tech in good field position with the interception, but now just coming away potentially with just holding the three points. Can they get three? Corona has had no success. 0 for 3 to start the young season. He has missed now. 28, 44, and 47 yards out, and the sidewinder, the lefty, on its way. Finally, yes, he's on the board for the first time in the new season. So the Red Raiders capitalize on the interception by Charbonnet and get the short field goal from Corona, true freshman from Beaumont. So a three to nothing lead early for the Red Raiders over the Mustangs. We go tailgating here in Lubbock with Lubbock Outback Steakhouse. Right yeah. Live and in color, right here at Texas Tech University. <laughs> Lubbock, Texas. Gary, I want to party with that guy. Oh, these guys are ready to go, aren't they, they? Come on, can you find better barbecue than in Texas? A little bit of Outback action going, too. like that stuff. Look at those kids. They're having a good time. I'm going to get an argument with my buddies in Kansas City, but, man, that's Taylor Charbonnet. Daniel Charbonnet's got two picks. Taylor Charbonnet makes a big play on special teams. All in the family. Going well there for the White Lakes. <laughs> So Bo Levi Mitchell, he's been picked off twice. Second one off the deflection, though. And now he's got it. And the offense through the Mustangs. Deep in their own territory. Got to hang on to it. Trips on the wide side. From their own 15. Little shovel. And Damari Martin. He was bottled up in the backfield. Barely got a piece of that one. <laughs> yeah, kind of risky trying to get that shovel pass working in there. But for... For SMU, our quiz knows sub uh, keys of the game. Obviously, they've got to create some opportunities here, Joel, whether that's big plays offensively, turnovers, opportunities. You've got to get points on the board, and basically defensively. You've got to be able to tackle these tech receivers. You cannot allow them to run after the catch. You saw the big 18-yard touchdown last week by Michael Crabtree. That's what the kind of thing that they'll do after the catch and make a lot of yards for their offense. Now it's going to be second and eight. With a bunch on the left side, the wide side of the field. Keep it on the ground, though. And Martin belted again as soon as he got the handoff. Still surges for a couple out to the 20. 
McKinnon Dixon making the play of the junior from Lufkin, Texas, a transfer from Cisco Junior College. And they talked him up with a conference call earlier this week. Yeah, pretty good job here by the quarterback of learning what's going on. You just count the people that's in here, one, two, and three of them, four of them up here, so they know he's going to run the football, and they feel like he can get in a little crack here. Good job by the defense of reacting, but what Bo Levi Mitchell is actually doing is he's counting the defense and trying to align the correct play with what he sees in front of him. So it's going to be a third and five. The attack. The important for field position purposes to get at least one first down. Time for Bo Levi Mitchell. And he's in and out. Looked like it was going to be the first down for Josh Bryant. Had to wait as he hit the deck, but he lost it. Yeah, Jamar Wall in coverage there. Bryant unable to catch that football, but it would have been enough for a first down. Good, comfortable throw across the middle of the field for Mitchell, but going to be another situation here with the ball's going over. Take a look at the receiver come from the outside in, and it's on the money. It just looks like Wall might have knocked it out. Jamar Wall is going back. Eric Morris waiting back for the punt. Or Thomas Morstead, one of the best punters in the nation. First team all-conference USA last year, eighth in the nation. Yeah, with a punter like this, you can flip the field, create some good field position. He's got a big-time leg. Now, what a week it was for Morris. Returns and receiving. Return one for a touchdown last week. Gets a break on this one from his own 30. Making a miss. And goes down across the midfield stride. What a job by Eric Morris after an 86-yarder last week for a touchdown. Fifth longest in Red Raider history. Trying to look like Danny Amendola a little bit. Isn't it? Three nothing lead for the Red Raiders in a short field once again. Good night for college football in Lubbock, Texas. And don't forget next week, college football Saturday presented by Acker and Suzuki. In back, Arizona takes on UCLA. Pac-10 opener for both teams. Rice looks to upset eighth-ranked Texas Longhorns with a double header. It all starts next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific in high definition. It's going to be a first and 10 for the Red Raiders at the 46 of the Mustangs with SMU. Welcome back once again to the three nothing ball game. Joel Myers, Gary Reese, and Emily Jones with a slip screen and out of the wing. Taken in by Tremaine Swindoll. All set up by a 29 yard punt return. That's pretty good stuff by Morris. Consecutive weeks getting things done in the kick return game for Texas Tech. So taking, taking advantage of good field position is a key for an offense. Last two times they've had the football, only three points out of it for for Texas Tech off the two interceptions. Yeah, and this SMU Mustang defense, and granted it's only a couple of games in, and they're regrouping as a program, but they've given up an average of 465 yards out of 119 Division I-A teams. That is 108 in the nation. Stout so far, but there goes Woods into the secondary. He's gone. Shannon Woods, the distance. And make it Baron Batch, rather. Not Shannon Woods on the carry. He bolted the sophomore from Midland, and he goes the distance. Well, that's what happens with this offense for both teams. You can spread the defense out, and you can get a little seam or a gash right there. All these tailbacks that get the football have a chance to take this all the way to the end zone. Nobody touched Mr. Batch as he got through the first and second level of the defense. And take a look at the defense coordinator, Tom Mason. He's got to regroup there. He's got to get a hat in that hole to make a little contact on Batch. Got to minimize that to a shorter game. Donnie Corona for the point after. And it hits the upright. It's live, and it's headed the other way. No, it's, it's off there. Yeah, it's not live off the goalpost. It's live if it's blocked. But it's dead off the goalpost. So a 9 to nothing lead as Corona misses that. And Badge, according to Mike Leach, has been their best running back over the first two-plus games. Yeah, this is a simple play. Both teams run this play. Look at the hole that he's going to run through. He's just going to sprint right to the end zone. Good job by the offensive line getting on their blocks. And one missed tackle there. Almost a shoestring had a chance to get Batch, but he outran the rest of the SMU defense. Good explosion there by Batch through the hole. We at first thought it was Shannon Woods in there running so well, but good job by Batch. He's been very productive in that, in that backfield along with Shannon Woods. Woods has had most of the carries. In fact, he's only had a four-yard average over the first two games. And when we talked to Mike Lee, on our conference call, I guess it was Tuesday or Wednesday, he brought up Batch. And he said the sophomore from Midland, as we look at our advanced auto parts, tech touchdown distribution, and this is the biggest surprise for a <laughs> passing strange, team. Isn't it? Well, especially after what you saw last year, that over the first two games, and now it's up to nine and three, but at the first 11, it was eight and three. I'm not sure the coach Leach really minds how this goes, but really, you look at the numbers on the right over the years, and mostly passing production here for this offense, three to one, two to one, those kinds of numbers, but just going the opposite way, well, there's a lot of folks that say Texas Tech can't run the football. If he plays and runs like that, 
You make defensive coordinators think, oh my gosh, we've got to worry about the pass and the run against Texas Tech. So Corona continues to have problems. It's going to be short kick, taken to about the five. As Henderson gets a nice lane in the block. And with the flag down to the play, he's across the 25 out of the 28 as we take it downstairs, Emily Jones. Emily. Well, guys, six games into Baron Batch's college career, he broke his ankle, had to have surgery, developed a staph infection, ended up having to have seven surgeries. He kind of got in a little bit of funk, and he he credits his former teammates, Keontae Dawson and Manny Ramirez, for kind of getting him out of that funk, refocused, back on football. He thinks he says things have been totally different this season. He's averaging eight yards a carry coming into this game, and after that run, it's going to go up. And Emily's also Achilles problems, redshirted last year. You talked about the break. The sophomore from Midland, though, was a bolt. And he had started in the backfield. They started with a two-back set. And Woods is usually the guy that sticks around, and that's why I was surprised. But it was Baron Batch in the single. And now it's all the way back to the six, half the distance to the goal. Yeah, the point of the infraction. Injuries are kind of mess with your psyche, as Emily's talking about. And good to see he's back in full strength. He's going to be another weapon that Mike Leach is going to be able to utilize. Like to go two-back sets in there. Shannon Woods and Brian Batch. Baron, excuse me, Baron Batch on the field together. Gives him a couple of weapons to throw to or to run the football to. Mitchell after the exchange now wants a timeout. And a 6.29 to play in the opening 15 minutes. Timeout at the news. So it's going to be 9 0 lead for Tech, a little more than halfway through the first 15. As we head to a game break, John. All right, Joel, thank you very much. Oregon trailed Purdue 20 to 6 at halftime in West Lafayette to come all the way back and then watch LeGarrette Blount take it in from three yards out in the second overtime. Mike Bellotti's team improves to 3 0. 32 26 the final. Joel and Gary and Emily back to y'all. Good one there. A very good game in West Lafayette. And thank you, John. Let's see now if they can get it together offensively, the Mustangs, because field position is absolutely killing them, Gary. Yeah, they did a pretty good job offensively, I think, holding up against this Texas Tech defensive front of not getting to the quarterback. So pass protection's been solid. And remember, this is a pass-first offense, and that's what Gene Jones would like to do. And you see the 3-1 set here to his left, the three receiver to the near sideline. It's kind of an earmark of what Gene does a lot more than Mike Leach at Texas Tech. Play fake and out of the edge. Bo Levi Mitchell putting it up for grabs again and intercepted again. Jamar Wall this time. He's got blockers and knocked out inside the 25. Down to the 21-yard line. Well, not a great ratio for your quarterback. Three series, three interceptions, and I know the one of them was tipped in a perhaps one that shouldn't have been intercepted, but June Jones is going to talk to him saying, hey, you're throwing the ball into three defensive backs back there. There's nobody back there but the black shirt. So you're rolling to your right a little bit. You see you receive a run, but you got to take take advantage of the backside. This is just a ball overthrown. Excellent job by Jamar Wall. Just finding the football and getting it back for his Red Raider football team. He led Tech with five interceptions last year. Takes that pick deep into Mustang territory. And from bad to worse, it's the true freshman out of Katy. Talks it over with one of the great quarterback coaches and offensive minds in college football, Gene Jones. Now maybe the game plan doesn't need to be throw the ball that far down the field. You know, the offense of both these teams are set up on, on distribution. Three, three receivers to the right, getting in little patterns and zones. Crabtree, nice block by another wide receiver, Walker. And with a flag down in the play, right where Walker had the block, number four. He's got a first and goal if it stands, but I think it's coming back on the hold. And you see the physicality of the receiver, and that's what he does real well. Look at his numbers last year. Led the nation. Holding offense, number four. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul remains first down. And a freshman winning the Bolitnikoff Award tell you, that tells you that college football really respected Michael Crabtree last season. And it's coming back uh, because of the block. And they called the hold on Walker on the outside. He had locked up with the D-back. Now, did you see uh, Big Crabtree go around there? Mr. Dennis Rock, the strong safety. <laughs> right in chest, and, and that, that's impressive at the end there. And here's the block we were talking about with Walker. Yeah, he got his yeah. hands on the outside of the jersey, but Michael Crabtree, look at that chest right there. Bingo. <laughs> got Dennis. So it's going to be a first and nap 10 once again, but back at the 23. Woods is going to stay in the backfield. Plenty of time, and a wide open man. Touchdown, Crabtree!
Well, are they in sync? I think so, guys. We talked about the special relationship between this quarterback and this receiver, Michael Crabtree and Graham Harrell. Tremendous numbers last season. We just looked at that for, Kirk, for uh, Michael Crabtree. And here's a receiver just going down and just going to the outside. A little bit of miscommunication, I think, on who's going to take the receiver coming through the Pony secondary. But good throw that time by Harrell and a good grab by his all-time receiver. So Crabtree in his third year here at Tech. He's a sophomore. And they're going for two. Well, they're down off their kicker by one on everybody's chart. Because the one that hit the upright. So Graham Harrell with time again. Corner, it's Walker, and he's out of bounds. Just ran out of real estate. So they fail on the two-point conversion. But Tech still with a 15 to nothing lead early. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues from Lubbock. And the Red Raiders capitalizing on Mustang mistakes. Welcome back as Big 12 College Football continues from Lubbock, Texas. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones, and the Red Raiders with a 15 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. We'll have it now deep in their own territory, second and 10. As Graham Haler, Harrell, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. After throwing last year for his 5,700 yards, this is his senior season. Ennis, Texas. At 6'3", 205. What about the next step? Sunday's in his future, Gary? Yeah, I think he's got an opportunity. He's obviously a quarterback that's polished throwing the football and getting him into the right system. That's going to be the key here for him. Giving some breathing room once again is Baron Bash, who's got the touchdown run of 43 yards. You like the left tackle, don't you? Yeah, I think this, this left tackle is a pretty good football player, and he's a great athlete. Rylan Reed, a big guy, 6'7", 315 pounder. He's actually bulked up a little bit, and very unique story. And he's a powerful, athletic guy, a guy that's got good wheels, had a minor league baseball career. He's had some diversity in his life, there's no doubt about that. He's a cancer survivor, 2004, had Hodgkin's non-lymphoma. That just spins. He's got it by a yard. He is an amazing story of perseverance, isn't it? He is, and really, and what he's been able to do, he was a minor league baseball player, pitched 95 miles an hour. That play started playing college football here, and he's improved every single year that he's been here. Guess what? Guess what? He's got a pretty good number at. It's called bench press. Yeah, Emily, I know you're very familiar with that story. Yeah, and it's so great. He he, he has ho had had so much adversity in his life. He had the cancer diagnosis and then beat it. And then a week later, his his dad died. He passed away, and he's just faced so much adversity in his life. He he says that that a setback is only a setup for a good comeback. So you can imagine when he broke his ankle last year at the Gator Bowl, he kind of laughed it off and said, "With all I've been through, this is." This is merely a bump in the road. So he really is a great story, and his teammates call him Pops or Granddad yeah. because he's about to be 27 years old yeah. in November. Yeah, four years in the Chicago White Sox system before he came here. And then, as you mentioned, he had the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, underwent the chemotherapy, and it's a great story. And he's strong. 625-pound bench press to his credit. That's remarkable. And converted, tie it in. He's a legit offensive tackle now. They went with the screen. And now the little dump off, short of the first down on the grab. It's taken in by Swindoll, a redshirt freshman out of Oklahoma City. He's short by about a yard. Well, this quarterback gets to throw the football very comfortably. Look at Ryland Reed here on the left side here. One-on-one -on -one pass protection. Watch him get his feet. He's trying to the big, the younger guys trying to get underneath him. I call him younger. He's 20, 21 years old, and you got a 26-year-old offensive tackle there, soon to be 27. Then they called him Pops. That's what his nickname is. So. Big guy doing a nice job. He's got great feet. He's a tremendous athlete. And the market now back at the 20, so it's going to be a third and five coming up. And let's see if the Mustangs can get it back in decent field position with a hold here. Tech, two of four so far in the third down tries, and a timeout is going to be called by Texas Tech using their first of three in the first half. So we'll see what Mike Lee and company have in plan. Reed, though, that's a good story. One to be continued. Third and five coming up for Graham Harrell, the senior quarterback of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. When you look at the active passing leaders in college football, Graham Harrell on top. And a guy that has a chance and 
I don't know if he'll get there because you're looking at Timmy Chang's amazing numbers at Hawaii, but if he puts together another five, 6,000 yards, which is entirely possible after throwing for 5,700 last year, could do it. Yeah, we've kind of done the math here, and we think that Graham Harrell has a chance over the next 10 games, and even if you can close a bowl game 11 foot, he gets the numbers, he can get there. Going to need over 500 yards. He has 11 games at about 545 or 555, I think it is, if uh, he only has 10 games to, to, to work with. Only 59 passing so far. He's got all day. And on the comeback trail, Edward Britton, a junior from El Paso, gets the first down. Good pocket protection. Way too much time. On the bottom of the screen here, you're going to see the receivers going down. You're going to find him, get it out on the outside. Go ahead and let it run, guys. This is just what Graham Harrell does. He just throws the ball. A little push off there by the receiver. That's kind of well taught, I thought, I think. You know, Texas Tech starting back the road three. And it usually doesn't take them much time. A little bubble screen deflected. That was up for grabs. And I bring up, it usually doesn't take them much time as he went past Castro. And that's because if you look at the first quarter numbers, Last year, they had 37 drives, scoring drives of two minutes or less. 32 of those 37 were touchdown drives. And Gary, maybe the most meaningless stat in football is time of possession, and especially when it comes to Texas Tech. Yeah, but one of the things that Mike Leach has done consistently over the years with this program is first downs. They click them off at a remarkable number, and they're one of the leading first down producers in college football year after year, and that's what keeps your offense on the field and moving it down. They're moving the chains and putting points on the board. Harold coughs it up, blind side hit. It's up for grabs, and did SMU come away with it? As Yinga forces it, and they do. The sack and the force by Yinga off the edge. They wanted to get your Yinga on track, and he's done a pretty good job of coming off the edge. One and a half sacks coming into this ball game. And watch number 48 from the left side of your screen. He's working on a defensive tackle, uh, excuse me, the offensive guard inside. Good job getting around Louis Vasquez there. And Yanga's going to come right here around Vasquez. Let's get a good move on him. And see the size difference there between Yanga and Vasquez? Yanga's about 220, 25 pounds. And Vasquez, he goes uh, just a faint 330. So 100 pound difference in those two guys, but he got the job done. Going to be a first down. Edelson recovered the fumble. Three once again on the new side, the wide side, and looking on a double move, overshooting his target, and it was going to be out of bounds anyway for Aldrick Robinson. Yeah, one of the keys here for SMU in his ball game is make opportunities, and you've got to convert those opportunities. This is a situation where you get a turnover against Graham Harrell, cough the football off, your defense turns it over to your offense, the last thing Bo Levi Mitchell needs to do is throw that ball into coverage where the defense can get their fourth interception of the day. He needs to be smart with that football. He's got a chance to put some points up there. Just be efficient with the decision. Ball to the 23 on a second and 10. Can they at least get three? And points off the turnover. Martin stays in the backfield. Plenty of time. And on the corner round, it's complete. Is it in? No, out of bounds with the one to Emmanuel Sanders. So a first to goal as he was diving for the pylon. What a great route that time. Brings it up down the seam. Looks like he's going to break it off to the post, and then he takes it back to the corner. This is the same route that they wanted to run last time. Just really wasn't there for him. And this is well read here by the quarterback. You see him fake it to the post. He gets his guy to turn. Goes right out to the outside. That might be – that's a review. That's going to be a touchdown, folks. Unless he stepped out of bounds. They'll probably take a look at this on the, re on the replay. I would hope so if they saw that replay. And Sanders will be free off the all-time lead for the Mustangs. It's not going to be reviewed, obviously. Option one, Mitchell trying to get to the corner, diving, and a flag out of the secondary. And probably going to be a hold on the edge there. They have holding right when you try to win that corner. That often, oftentimes happens to an offense. But I tell you, you take that back to play, I think the replay officials might have needed to take a look at that last play. He didn't look out of bounds, did he? He did not look like he was out of bounds. Maybe they're trying to say the buzzer was going off or something here. Maybe the previous play is going to be reviewed. By the wide receiver, Robinson. You know, on critical plays, that's really what the replay officials are really looking to make any kind of judgment on it. Here's going to be the catch by Sanders again. Watch him coming down with the football. Does he step out of bounds? That's the critical thing. No, no. he's in bounds right there. And watch his right hand that's inside 
Can't tell if that's out of bounds or not. Step out of bounds. Might have been a good non-call. That's out of the 10. And it's going to be first and goal there. That's quite a throw by it was, Levi Mitchell. It was a good throw, a good rope throw. Wilkerson on the edge on the outside. Looking to the corner the other way, though, and in trouble. He's down. Sack coming up. Oh, and it's McKinney Dixon. Well, that's what happens when you go with a 3 1 situation here. You got three receivers to the near sideline, and then you come right back to the one receiver side, and it was all eight up. Had everybody covered in the secondary. He never Dixon. looked off that wide out on the far side, did he, Gary? No, he never did. He never got that one on the far, the single receiver side to look inside, and that's it. Didn't allow him to throw the football out there. And McKinney Dixon getting the sack, and been a very productive rusher for Ruffin McNeil's defense. Juco transfer coming in. Got his third sack on the season. So now it's going to be second and goal. Can't stand prosperity after the holding call. The sack is all the way back to the 17. We'll take a timeout. Just like the Mustangs of SFU, just about four minutes gone by in the second 15. And a shutout so far for Texas Tech. College Football Saturday, all brought to you by Liberty Mutual, providing auto, home, and life insurance from a company that's as responsible as you are. Responsibility, what's your policy? Also by Whataburger, just like you like it. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. And at home in mom's lap. <laughs> Forget about a sold out crowd. They, got, they must have good out. seats because there's people standing up all over the place and standing up in front of that young man. It's back to 17 as we bring it back to Lubbock. What a transformation of this program in the nine years under Mike Leach. Sold out. New, press, new development coming on the east side next year. It'll be second and goal on the play fake. Mitchell finds some time. And across the line. Intercepted. And it's intercepted. It shouldn't be an interception. Well, he went across the line. There's no question. It's the line. There's no question. It's picked off. It makes back. Darcel McBath. And there's a flag late. It'll be declined. Bo Levi Mitchell's pass picked up. Now Bo Levi Mitchell, pocket held up for a while, then he feels like he's got pressure and he needs to get out. Young man had room to take it inside the 10. Yeah, get he points. had a chance to run the football. That's, a, that's the experience and decision making I was talking about earlier in the first quarter. When he brings the ball down, he's got to make the decision of throw it or run. Look at it there. He's got a great room. Stop the play right there. You can see all the run room he had to the outside. And great play by McBath getting out there. He's trying to get to his receiver on the outside and not able to get there. He's a senior. Gainesville, Texas, third year as a starter. So he's seen a lot. Yeah. Trying to fit it into Aldrick Robinson there. And tell you, just a decision making what's going on here. He's seen these big 12 cornerbacks and defensive backs reacting very well for Texas Tech. So it's at the two. Tech's got it. So territory. Last time at the three. Otherwise, first three. It was almost a midfield strike for them. Deep in his own end zone. Going for Michael Crabtree. The jump ball. Crabtree comes down with it. Oh, it. He lost the football on his way down. It's taken away. And way. And well, it's a late whistle coming into the midfield strike. I don't As think it's it going to be a kid. who took it away. Bell on the jump. Man, they're going to will they call it a catch. I'm not sure. This that is was a review. Catch. This is a review yeah, all the way. They better take a look at this thing because I'm not sure it wasn't. By the way, they did review the play uh, for SMU inside the pylon there. He, they did say that he did step out. We talked to him in the truck, the officials in the replay booth. And this ball was thrown by Graham Harrell all the way down from his end zone, put the ball up in the air almost 60 yards, and they're going to call it an incomplete pass. I didn't think that Graham Harrell had, uh, excuse me, Michael Crabtree had control of that football down the field. We'll take a look at it here on the replay and to see what happened. Going to be receiver going to run all the way down with him down the field. Does Crabtree come down with his football or not? Ball made the, made the ground knocked that ball out. Yeah. Elbow is down. Very the ball comes covers for SMU. So. And you can't blame them for throwing that type of pass to a guy that's 6'3 going up against a 5'10 quarterback. No, you're trying to make a big home run play, and they did it last week uh, in that ball game. Similar situation, trying to throw the ball down the field. 
They'll run it straight up the gut. A big run as it's a first down for Batch. One start from sophomore from Midland. He's already got the 43 yard touchdown. Batch or Bolt just <laughs> running fast. Boy, he gets the ball in his hand. Doesn't take him her long to get going to full speed. That's what you want from a tailback. Guy who can get to fourth gear without having to go through second and third gear. And we've talked about it so often in Big 12 College Football Saturday, the wide splits of Texas Tech, uh, up, upwards of four feet between linemen. So he's got lanes to look for. It'll be Woods this time, trying to dance to the outside short yardage across the 15, out to the 19. Gain of about four for Shannon Woods, the senior from McKinney. Let's head to John Radigan once again in the studio. John. All right, Joel, let's take a look at what Oklahoma is doing against Washington in the Pacific Northwest. How about Sam Bradford to Joaquin Iglesias for 13 yards and a touchdown? 7 0 Sooners with the early lead. Bob Stoops' team trying to go to 3 0. And it's against the Pac 10 team. It's not in Eugene, Oregon, and they haven't had any controversial <laughs> reviews, but you know, Bob Stoops got his guys up going into Pac 10 country after going to Eugene a couple of years ago. It's a big game for, for Bob Stoops going against the Pac-10 team, period. Uh, let me get the monkey off his back. Great blocking for Woods off the right side. He makes the most of it out to the 39. Reeling his way deep into the secondary and another first down for Texas Tech on the ground. You know, and this run game is really all set up by the passing game. You got the big split, sure, but you got capable running backs and these big offensive linemen. They oversize this SMU defensive front. It's, it's almost amazing how much bigger this offensive front is from Texas Tech compared to the defensive front of SMU. And now we're going to take a look at the line splits. See the adjustment out there on the right side? You had a, about a four or five foot split there. It'll be a first down. Harrell's got all day. And the bullet is complete. He's got Britain. And check that. It is going to be Lewis, 17, not 27. It's going to be a first down. Good job there throwing the ball out there. I was talking about the size difference between SMU's defensive front than Ryland Reed and his group up there. Just take a look at this, folks. 6'6", 323 pounds average for Texas Tech offensive line. SMU defensive front, just 6'2", and a paltry 259 pounds. So there's some size difference there. If you get big on big, looks like Texas Tech might win that one. That's a few porterhouse stakes, isn't it? You bet. Harrell again, stepping up and finding a great lane to Touchdown throw. To How do you lose Crabtree? He's open. Touchdown, Tech. Now you've got three SMU Mustang defenders all looking at each other around the five-yard line, but nobody decided to go with Michael Crabtree down the field. And when Graham Harrell rolled out of the pocket, he said, what is this, this warm-ups? There's nobody within 15 yards of Michael Crabtree. He's down on the outside, and he's going to run all the way right through there, stop it right there, and nobody's going with him. You see defender here, here, and here? Well, and then Crabtree just continues down the field. Nobody within 10 yards of him when he catches that football. Corona for the point after. They're going to get the upright today. That's why they went for the two and failed on that on their last touchdown. This time it's perfect. So getting away from FSMU early with 8.51 to play in the half. But again, the mistakes, the interceptions, the penalties. And Crabtree, well, he's got a second touchdown reception of the game. The Bolitnikov award winner from last season. It's been a long first half already for the Mustangs of SMU. Welcome back to Lubbock. 5.08 left in the first 30 minutes. And now the Red Raiders get it deep in their own territory. It hasn't made a difference, though. And at least lately. They're starting to put it together offensively. A mistake costing SMU, though. Four interceptions. Harrell off the play fake. And will there be a block downfield? No, but Defront Lewis still gets the first down. And sophomore from Pallet Station. Caught 10 last year's true freshman. There's some talent on both sides of wide receiver. There's a lot of receivers on this field that are very, very talented. You got great size, great speed, and just a lot of different ways to keep the hands of the football to them. And so good job of taking it inside of the linebacker and then working to the outside and one other receiver out there. So a lot of space to work with for Graham Harrell and his receiver. Two to each side for Harrell to work with on a first down and some breathing room. A little shallow cross. It's Lewis again, and another first down. Boy, he's got a little circle on the back of the bat to distract him one way, and then Lewis on the shadow. Yeah, it's one, two, three areas, and you've even got a crosser across the field, and Detron Lewis is going to be at the very far top side of the field, and he come across Graham Harrell's vision there. Nobody within five yards of him, so excellent job of decision-making and a little indecision. See the receivers here in the top, and the bat goes across. All three of them go that way, and then Lewis 
underneath is an easy throw and catch. Matt stays in there. He's been the most effective, although Woods had a couple of nice runs on that long drive. So four minutes plus and counting left of the half. Take the bubble and go the other way. A dump off screen. Batch has blocking. Oh on the sideline, comes back into the congestion. And another first down into SMU territory all the way to the 42. He's got the sideline. He's probably gone. Well, this is a well set up play. They fake the screen to the right side. Got the lineman coming across this way. And they release. And then we got back with his speed, getting big guys down in front. I thought he was going to break this one through, but a great inside out close by the defense. And didn't allow him to get down the field as much as I thought he was going to get. But uh, see the two, two catches on the night. They'll throw the ball to both Batch and to Shannon Woods consistently with this offense. They brought Rashad Hawk going to the field, a true freshman out of Copper's Cove. Mike Leach told us, I asked him about all these true freshmen, a redshirt freshman. He's got a wide receiver, and he said, this kid is ahead of the game right now. He stood out yeah, over the last few days. 86, Rashad Hawk. That's right, 86, Hawk. You know, he's 6'4", six, six, 190-pounder from Copper Scove. And big target out there. And playing as a true freshman, that's pretty good stuff. That's a tall wide receiver. They got some swindles, a 6'3 kid. Adam James, another redshirt freshman, and that's Craig James' son. 6'3", 220, out of Selena. Yeah, Michael Crabtree, spectacular start today once again, Gary. Well, I tell you, you know, just came on the scene last year, really first on the National Receiver of the Year, of the year the Lippincoff Award winner, and he's just got a great little knack for catching the football and making things happen after he catches it. Got a big night here with Graham Harrell, a couple of scores on the evening, and just seems like a workmanlike effort for him. And how do you turn a guy like that loose? you got to give him a little respect, but nobody going to catch Michael Crabtree when he gets behind you like that. And Graham Harrell, Got to be pleased with how his uh, receiver here back in sync. Last week wasn't that productive early on, but they've continued to grow with that. Four catches, and you see the yardage on the evening and a couple of scores. It'll be Batch. And slowed down up the middle. And back to what you were talking about with Crabtree, though. Mike Leach put it best uh, in midweek when we spoke with him, and he said, right now Graham Harrell and Mike Crabtree are their own worst enemies because everybody expects them to have monster days every weekend. we remind you. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. Yeah, when you talk about the numbers that Harold and Michael Crabtree put up consistently, you know, it's expected. You know, you get that level of expectation, and when you fall a little bit short of those things, which are tremendous numbers in their own right, people are saying, what's going on? They pick up the stunt up front. Harold has time, and it's dropped, though, by his wideout on that side. Edward Brick. Carroll did what he needed to do as far as get out of the pocket to have a chance to throw the football. Britton just didn't reach out and grab that football. Had it, had it got there to him, would have gotten the first down as well. So one of the few drops today by the Tech wide receivers. Harold, after the miss, is now 12 of 22 for 175 yards. Crabtree with four for 92. And now third and four. Blitz off the edge. And running by the blitz, Shannon Woods, but he's dropped by the backer. Got a good play defensively. They get two and it looked like it could have been enough for the first down. And coming up big for the Mustangs, it was Moxie Gimba. I don't think there's any choice here for uh, for Mike Leach. He's a fourth and go for it kind of a coach. Even in, even in his own. Yeah, even his, <laughs> no doubt about that. Well, he tied for the lead in college football last year on fourth down tries. He's got his big offensive lineup there, and I think behind Steve Hamby, the center, feels like he can get a yard here. Make the decision with Graham Harrell, get it to the tailback. Yeah, right side coming up early. That'll cost him. Marlon Wynn. False start. Awesome. Number 67. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Fourth and, and Gary, when we bring up going for it on fourth down, this is from a winning program. Too often it's the losing programs when you talk about going for it on fourth down. Mike, Mike has a, has a, is a consistent coach about this. He leads the, the nation in going for it on fourth down. And here in your own home ballpark, you kind of have a lot of confidence that you're going to be able to do some things. But this offense, they feel like they can get the necessary yardage time in and time out. And he's been very productive over the years, getting great success on fourth down. Can afford to gamble here. Up 22 to nothing. We look for the slant for Walker. That was taken away on a jam. Now Harold on the comeback route. 
Good adjustment both ways. And the first down, it's complete. He went to Eric Morris. Morris had a big game last week receiving. That's his first catch so far tonight. Well, good job there by SMU defensively early in the play, but he had to get away from Patrick Fleming, number 89, who was in pursuit off the backside, and then a rope here to the outside. Good job of making the throw and catch there to get yourself that first down to Eric Morris. Senior from Shallow Water keeps the drive alive. A guy in the opener. Morris had nine catches. Fake it on the motion man, Crabtree, and go to him anyway. And again, they did not pick up Crabtree. He's out of bounds with the first down to the 15. How do you not track him every step of the way? Well, early in the ballgame, remember the first play from Scrimmage, or one of the first plays from early in the ballgame. He handed that off to Michael Crabtree coming around there, and he got a few yards on that, and now you have a chance to bring him around. And what happens is you run your receivers down the field, and he takes take some space away. Michael Crabtree is as good a got player with the ball in his hands as he is make as a receiver catching football. So just another way to put the ball in his hands on a, almost like a slip screen. Scott started back at the Tech 17. It continues at the 15. Crabtree now for the century mark. Five catches, 103 yards. A bullet. And going there, was it complete? Yes. Rashad Hawk, the big guy we were talking about, the true freshman at 6'4", 190. Boy, that's a long throw, too. Yeah, this is a long throw from the far hash mark. This is about a 45-yard throw on a rope by Graham Harrell to the sideline there. And Hawk pulls it in comfortably. Looks like a good target for him. Well, there's so many talented kids in the state of Texas, and that's one thing SMU is encouraged by. They've already got 20 commitments next year for June Jones, something they haven't done in many, many years. In the state of Texas, rich in football talent, keep just inside the state, and the program will be back. That's Mike Leach. Harold popping it over the middle. Yeah. Out of the reach of Swindle. And Mike Leach has been recruiting here for a number of years, and June being out in Hawaii, he's primarily recruited the West Coast, but uh, now back here in this fertile ground of recruiting, he's able to go try to go get some skilled guys and, and big guys up front. And he talked to us about you know, what it's going to be like getting skilled guys. And he said with his offense, they, they're, they're knocking on his door, which is really impressive. But uh, he has the recognition to bring in quarterbacks and receivers to have that big-time offense. It'll be third and a yard for the six. Harold on the sneak, and he's across inside the five. He's got the first two goal. So that'll stop it momentarily with 67 seconds left in the half. A half dominated by Texas Tech. And the real story for SMU, though, all the picks, the interceptions, and the mistakes by a true freshman quarterback, and the indecision back there. Yeah, and you know, then the defense, they're making the plays, too. Texas Tech, they're coming up with those balls. It's not like they're just gifts, but. Probably some poor decisions, definitely for sure, by Bo Le Levi Mitchell, the quarterback. And when they look at the game tape with Coach Jones, they're going to realize, you know, probably should have pulled that ball down or gone somewhere else with it, else, else with it, keep us out of the bad situation. So it was stopped by the official. 57 seconds left. I think we've got an ill player, and they're asking him right. to come off the field and going to replace him here for a play. And the humane thing <laughs> to do here. <laughs> so Mickey Okafor is going to go in for Marlon Wynn, give him a break. It's a redshirt freshman coming in out of Houston over the right tackle spot. On first and goal from the four. Now the wide clock is moving. Senior from San Antonio calling out the blocking assignments to center. Stephen Hamby. And just wide of the intended target, trying to get him to Crabtree, but it was behind him. Well, Michael Crabtree is just going to push down and get into the, into the end zone. Watch him go up on this defensive backer. Darius Bell is going to turn around there, quick turn, and the ball is just a little bit wide. But then in his wheelhouse right there, would have been able to catch that ball probably for a touchdown. Right now, 310 yards of total offense and 40 snaps for Texas Tech. 137 for the Mustangs. And a dead ball foul coming up before the snap, a procedure call. Well, second down, they're going to run the ball inside. Mike Leach decides to run the football with Shannon Woods inside. Now here on second and nine, this really opens up more of the passing game strategy to him. 
for him. I think that he could easily run it with Shannon Woods again and perhaps crease his defense. Bunches three on the near side and the bottom of the screen, the wide side of the field with Crabtree in the middle. Well, they lose him again. We had that long touchdown reception. Harrell looking in that direction. Underneath Morris. They got to him in a hurry at the six. So smart close as well as Jones. Good job of the Mustangs on recovery. It's Tyler Jones, the free safety. Well, when the ball's in the air, you want to rally to it. Good job there by the secondary making a, just a short, short gain. Inside of 20 seconds. Yes. Two timeouts still on the board for both Tech and SMU. Tech definitely was, doesn't want to stop it or make, make it SMU. Harold in trouble and loses the helmet. It's going to be a penalty. He's not down. Well, they're stopping the play yep. for safety reasons, and that's why it's not a, not going to be a continuation play. Maybe an automatic first down with a. He had his receiver Swindle in the back of the end zone. Personal foul penalty here on the face mask. Yeah, but that's with only a second left on the clock. So as cavalier as they were with the clock and two timeouts on the board, it may really cost them now. Completely off, the ball is immediately dead. On the play, personal foul. <laughs> well, this is a gladiator, so we're going to go ahead and. Fans not happy about the call here to stop that with a chance to throw in the end zone, which they did. But when the helmet comes off, you'll see the rush here from the outside. It's just a swim move underneath. Patrick Fleming gets that helmet off, pulls it up, and it looks like around the backside. Really, what well, was he grabbed the face mask? Face mask and pulled the helmet off and Graham Harrell just continues. <laughs> hey, he's a warrior. He kept playing. He, he knows he's got a touchdown, but darn, not going to happen. So with one second, well, they can push it back to three seconds on the clock, Joel. And yeah, but still, that's just one snap. But no field goal. Looks like Mike Leach decided to keep the offense out there. And he's enforced from the free spot. So it did cost them not stopping the clock sooner. And a little bit more time left up there. And that's what Mike Leach is saying. There's only three left. And two timeouts on the board. They figured they could make the decision after the touchdown. Well, after the snap on third down, and whether or not it was going to be a score. Now they're going to take a timeout here again to kind yeah. of utilize that to kind of sort things out. And they also want the review upstairs to look at when the helmet came off. How much time was left? Well, let's take a look here. We've got the, the clock running at the top of the screen there on the left. You see the box and the helmet's going to come off. We're at eight, nine, seven. Helmet's still on. Keep it rolling, guys. Keep it going. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. Okay, yeah. we're at about seven, maybe six seconds at the worst. There's the flag comes in six, five seconds. We've got three on the board, so I'm not sure if that's reviewable or not. They've got three still up there. John Radigan and the guys are going to be coming up at the break. It's been all tech. And Iowa State matching up with Iowa. Oklahoma State, big day for the Cowboys. How about New Mexico? New State at Nebraska. Nice start for the Huskers at home. John and the guys in the studio at the half. Jenna Woods is going to be the single. So it should be the final snap of the half from the three. That's number five at the top of the screen up there. It's like one on one coverage. If, uh, that's a bit, man. I'd be thinking number five. Going that way. And Crabtree can't hang on. That'll do it. Now at the end of the first half, working against Darius Bell. So a gamble. They had the sure three on the field goal, a chip shot. <laughs> the fans not happy about it. They go to the locker room, still up with the shutout and 22 on the board. Very difficult first half for that young man. You can see he's got a great arm. Yeah, There's no arm. question he's, he's a good athlete. Yeah. But the decision making, he's a true freshman. Last year at this time, leading Katie High School to a state 5A Division II title. Big first half, though, for Michael Crabtree. And almost added to it with a third touchdown reception as we go downstairs to Emily Jones. Emily? Coach, your defense put your offense in some great positions, not able to capitalize it, on each and every one of them. Defense played great. Uh, we don't have an X or Z right now that can consistently catch the ball. Okay, 
Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Red Raiders of Texas Tech trying to get the 3-0 halfway there. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues from Lubbock. And the Red Raiders all over the Mustangs of SMU with a shutout up by 22. Welcome back once again as we continue. And right now, coming into the game, you had to figure a five-touchdown underdog. It was going to be difficult for SMU to begin with, but they can't beat themselves, and that's what they've done, throwing four interceptions for the first half. Well, we knew it would be an offensive shootout and a chance to throw the football around, but the mistakes made early in this football game by young quarterback throwing the ball up into cover, Daniel Charbonnet, getting one of two interceptions that he gets on the evening. Here's the second one. Bo Levi Mitchell, the quarterback for SMU, a rich, just a true freshman out of high school, Katy High School. Didn't have a great decision-making first half, I thought, Joel. And he needs to pick that up. And that's the growing pains that you have with a young quarterback. Four interceptions in the first half. Not going to get a chance to win a ball game, especially here at Texas Tech, with that kind of production. And it's not exactly a shock going up against the secondary and a defense that's had their problems over the first two games that Michael Crabtree was going to pit in a very big performance. Well, you talk about receivers and running back and guys that throw and catch a football. Michael Crabtree and Graham Harrell having a spectacular night. And here we go with another touchdown. And Michael Crabtree is just an amazing receiver and catching the football. But, you know, interesting comment at the end of the close of the first half my, uh, with Emily Jones talking with Mike Leach, talking about his receiving core, that he does not have an X or a Z receiver catching the ball consistently. It'll be interesting to see in the second half. See the turnovers there. That's going to be the big thing here that SMU is going to gate going into this second half. If they can clean that up, they can move the ball against this, te this Texas Tech defense. They've shown the ability to do that. And then they'll be able to get some production offensively. You know, Mike Leach also told us, as we talked to him earlier this week, that he liked what Hawk had presented. Number 86, Rashad Hawk, a big wide receiver, a true freshman out of Copper's Cove. So we might see more of him in the second half. And the end zone, it is going to be brought out. And a good return across the 25 for the Red Raiders as it goes out all the way jamar wall the defensive back to the 20 call it the 28. emily jones what's the latest downstairs well guys i spoke with june jones on his way out of the locker room he said he is proud of his defense they made some plays four interceptions for his offense and only 22 points does tech have to show for it as for the play of his quarterback he said bo levi is just going to have to work his way out of this he's a young kid he is having some problems with the decision making and and uh, tucking the ball and running when he's had the opportunity guys but he said that's part of it you live and you learn and you, that's what you live with with a true freshman a kid that has just won a state title it's Hawk, the young man I mentioned. I had a feeling with the way Mike Leach left us at the end of the first half, he was going to experiment with some other guys. Yeah, put guys into the consistently catch a football. You know, you throw the ball around, you got to catch it. Here's what Tech did in the first half. You see that production there. He got the field goal on the first interception. Well, I'm not pumping the ball away, and then a couple of touchdowns there in the midway, and then the third touchdown. Not very good on the PAT and point after tries for Texas Tech in this ballgame. So 12 in a row for Texas Tech. For SMU, a couple of former Southwest Conference opponents. And batch battles when he gets the first down. They great penetration. So a nifty move, a little slide, and a juke by batch in the backfield to get those two tough yards. And a leader so far, 210 for Harrell, and that's after a slow start for Graham Harrell for the most part. Yeah, and I like what batch it gives him that running game opportunity there, just kind of a burst through the middle of the field and had some big runs and see the one touchdown there. So pretty good production there for the Batch run the ball and help that offense. You can see the screen coming. And Batch slowed down. Gets close to 10. Give him nine. Into the secondary he went. And it's much like just handing it off to these running backs. And both of these offenses, both for SMU and for Texas Tech, single back <clears throat> set out there. And the offensive screen play is just a staple in Mike Leach's offense. He run it for years. Just like handing the ball off to his uh, tailback. Texas Tech, the team, one of the highest scoring teams of the nation last year. 18 to the last 20 with 30 or more. They've done it six straight. Going back to last season, close to that already tonight. And middle of the field for Crabtree. And breaking the tackle, he's gone. Michael Crabtree with the score. Well, definitely some miscommunication in the secondary and the linebacker level for SMU on that play. 
Michael Crabtree on the far side of the field came all the way across. Graham Harrell had plenty of time to throw the football and throws a strike to his big receiver and now he's tied Kingsbury for touchdowns. So Good 95 stuff there. for Graham Harrell. And he's not thinking about that right now in game number three. They're just halfway through it. They're going to get their kicking game together. Donnie Corona for the point after. And pushes it but still gets it inside the upright. So Crabtree with his third touchdown reception of the game. Picking up right where he left off last season. That's an award winner. College football Saturday presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 08. Get the lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance driven ATVs. Brought to you in part by Valero, the All American gasoline for the Great American Highway. By Sport Clips. Guys love sports, guys get haircuts. And the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop at the company that sports college football, Overstock.com, at home with the O. And at home in Lubbock, Texas. Beautiful night. Absolutely perfect night for football. It was in the high 70s, right around 80 degrees at kick. Hasn't been a perfect night, though, for the Mustangs of SMU. Too many mistakes. We're ready to get it for the first time offensively in the second half. Jesse Henderson waits back deep. And he will get it at the three. Lane over to the left. Just blocked. Weaving his way with good field position now. Henderson bumped out of bounds across the 40 out to the 43. Well, excellent job there by SMU, kind of picking their way back. And that's what you want as a head coach. June Jones has got to be encouraged by his kick return team. Hey, we're down, guys. Go ahead and make it make it happen out there on special teams. Emily Jones talked about opportunity plays, and that's what we want to get here. And this is an opportunity to give you great field position to start this drive. And, and now Bo Levi and company, his offense out there, Bo Levi Mitchell needs to get to, a chance to get field position and put the points on the board and be productive offensively. That man on the sideline, he can coach special teams. Frank Gant, who is, of course, the special teams coach of the year in the NFL. A long run in the NFL. Mitchell dropped as he's tripped up for a sack back at about the 40. And a look back on that last touchdown, middle of the field, way too exposed. Well, you've got him on the right side of the screen here. Graham Harrell's got crossers in front of him, brings the defense down, and then there's just a missed tackle at the end of the play there. I think that was Darius Bell, the safety at the cornerback. Just can't get to Michael Crabtree. Give him too much real estate, and you've got to make that play. You're the only one back there to make it happen. And Michael Crabtree, 6'3", 220-pounder, got to wrap him up and be physical on him and couldn't get that done. So that was the toss to tie. Graham Harrell with Cliff Kingsbury, the all-time touchdown leader. Touchdown passes at Texas Tech. Martin bending it. Getting back the loss off the sack and a yard to boot up to the 45. It'll be third and long. And dropped by Daniel Howard. That was an interesting sack when one play back. Bo Levi Mitchell stepped up into the pocket. And I think he just tripped. I didn't think anybody from Texas Tech got a hand on him. So when he's down, and it's a sack in the books, probably for a team sack. As you look at that Suzuki scoring drive, 90 seconds. That's all it took. As they started the ball, detected at their own 28. A very meaningless stat, time of possession, and especially the Texas Tech, but overrated as far as I'm concerned anyway. And as you saw, when you look at the halftime numbers, SMU had the ball more in the first half than Texas Tech, yet they were down 22 to nothing. So now third and about eight. Can they get to the marker? Diving, losing to Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, will he have enough? Looks like he's about a yard shy with ball squirted out of bounds. He's good poise, though, by Bo Levi Mitchell standing in the pocket. Now, he's 6'1", Joel. He's got plenty of size back there in that pocket. He's got big guys coming around him, and that's a pretty good throw outside to Sanders. I thought that was ball had a lot of velocity on it and got to the receiver in time and brings up a fourth and manageable situation here. You know, I think that no, no different if Joan Jones. Hey, you're down 29 points to this ball game. Might as well go for it on fourth down. And, He's got to see what happens, roll the dice a little bit. And he's got good feet, got good wheels. I'm surprised maybe he doesn't take it outside and run it occasionally. Yeah. On a design roll. Let's see what they do here on fourth and one. Going for the bundle and looking for Wilkerson. Knocked away by Wall. Well, Jamar Wall has played, I think, a pretty good football game. Great job knocking that ball away. All Big 12 preseason selection for the cornerback spot. And he's run with all these SMU receivers tonight and knocked several balls away. 
So you take a look here, and I'm not sure that I'd want to do this on fourth and short. Throw it 60 yards down the field, trying to make the big home run play, and great effort there by Wally. He'd be disappointed he didn't pull that one in. He had two hands on it. Much better opportunity to catch that football than the receiver, but you know, you're fourth and short. You'd think you'd probably get a five-yard catch. Or will your quarterback out on the edge and let him run for a yard or two? Mitchell has been committed, though, to the pocket. He has really hung in there for his offensive line tonight, Gary. The clock so should not have been running. He's, he's shown confidence in the guys up front. There's something to be said for that, too. Because the first sign that there's going to be a breakdown, you know it. They're out, and they're out often. And the thing you want to want to go as an offensive line is you want to be consistent. A little bit of an inconsistency, and it's a learning process. And one thing they don't have offensively for SMU on their offensive line is depth, quality depth. And that's going to take a little time to develop. Harold with time going deep for Hawk. And he couldn't pull it into the five, and he was available. John Radigan with a game break. John. Yeah, game of the century, I guess, guys. And it's uh, USC. Making a 14-3 right here. Check out Mark Sanchez to Blake Ailes. That's a one-yard touchdown pass on the play action fake. And the Trojans lead this one 14-3. Second quarter. All right, John. Game Just, of the century? I'm not sure about that. Well, because Ohio State, uh, you're putting them on a pedestal they probably don't deserve no, right not, now. Not at all. They're and, not They're not that quality no. of football team. I do not believe it so whatsoever. And I've seen enough of USC, Gary. Their team speed, both sides, offensively and defensively. Yeah, they deserve the number one right now. Moving out of the backfield. Big time run. Jenna Woods. The senior from McKinney gives him a first down. Yeah, and Chris Cook, the uh, sports information director's notes this week, he says, hey, the resurgent Shannon Woods back to form with the four touchdowns prior to this ball game coming in here. And looks like he's running pretty darn well to me. He and Batch both give you that explosive power that you want out of the tailback in this offense to just gas the defense when, uh, when the opportunity presents itself. So the first down takes it to the 32 of SMU on a short field again for Texas Tech. Starting at their own 48. Showing the blitz and it's picked up easily. It's Aaron Morrison and hits the safety, Dennis, in the back. <laughs> so the junior from Leavenworth, Kansas, he didn't realize how good he had it. You know, I was talking about Shannon Woods and, you know, really running the football. But you know what he brings to the offense? As a senior running back, what he does also is actually do a good job blocking. Watch him on the right side. He's going to go to the right side and look, and then guess what? He's going to have to peel back to get a block. Watch Shannon Woods react to the blitzer here. And that's not a great effort by the SMU defender, but still, Shannon Woods did exactly what he needed to do, and that's what you want from a senior running back on your, on your pass protection. Crabtree. A little quick cross underneath. Gets it down to about the 27. Well, back to Shannon Woods. Last season, half as many carries as two years ago and half as many yards, 439. Two years ago when he was healthy, 926 yards rushing. And he had 10 touchdowns with a six-yard average. So he's capable. He's very capable. But I think they've got a one-two punch here with, with Baron Batch and Shannon Woods. Those two are going to share the bulk of the load here. And I think that's a good way to go about it for this football team. And I think they'll all be pleased with the production. They just get wins, and they've been doing that so far this season. It'll be third and four. And, well, the receiver turned in. The ball to Lewis went the other way. The sophomore from College Station. You know, I was wondering when I saw the, the numbers on Graham Harrell last week, was it 17 or 40 or that he had thrown out yeah, there? Exactly. So, something like that. Well, no, it so, wasn't 17, but he was under 300 yards. Yeah, he's definitely had some numbers that just weren't right. And I think some of it's with the drops he's here. you got balls in the hands of receivers tonight. And Michael Crabtree has had that problem, didn't pull the football in. And, and others as well. We saw Detron Lewis right there. I think that's a catchable football. Well, it goes back to last week. He only hit 41% of his attempts, Gary, and that was a career low. So all of a sudden, people were talking about what's going on. Is, is he not communicating with the guys? It'll be Corona. It'll be a 44-yard attempt, and it looked like me. I duck the hook. So they still have issues. Another well, missed field goal attempt. Yeah, that's something needs to be cleaned up if uh, they're going to have a lot of success. Especially when you get a Big 12 conference play, you need your kicker to be a big factor in the ballgame. It's still a 29-point lead for Texas Tech. One of the greatest receivers in Texas Tech history, Dave Parks. First Red Raiders selected AP First Team All-America and became the number one overall selection by the 49ers in the 1964 NFL Draft. Bell at halftime tonight. Good to see Dave Parks honored by Red Raider faithful his upcoming induction into the National Collegiate 
Football Hall of Fame. So congratulations to one of the great Red Raiders of all time and honored finally going into the College Football Hall of Fame. So good numbers, especially great numbers in those days. And it wasn't quite as vertical, the game. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks about the game today. And it's changed just from, a bit. From a receiver's perspective. SMU's got it second time offensively in the second half. They get into their own 27. Martin, nobody accounted for him early. And in the post corner, it's complete. And a first down goes to Emmanuel Sanders as we head downstairs. Emily? Guys, thank you. Well, Dave Parks, honored at halftime. You're going into the College Football Hall of Fame. Pretty special night for you. It was special. I had EJ behind me and Anderson behind me. That hadn't happened in a long time, so that was great. I, had, I enjoyed that. When you look back at what you were able to do at Tech and then also at the next level, where does this rank as far as going into the College Football Hall of Fame? Well, I never really thought about this um, because we, we didn't have the strongest teams when I was here, and uh, I just I really think that stuff like this is for teams. And uh, but. After hearing the stats on this and the number of players that's been around, yeah, this is really special. And I, it's, it's Donnie's told me a lot, and so is EJ, and I'm into it. I mean, it's really, uh, I'm really thankful for it. Well, and how fun is it for you to now, all these years later, come back, watch this team, follow this program, and then see a guy like Michael Crabtree? Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. All of them. I tell you, the whole program's strong. Defensive backs are catching as good as anybody. I mean, they're out there doing the job, man. I love it. All right. Dave Parks, congratulations right. on the Thank honor. So good much. to see you, guys. Yeah, and he was referring to Anderson, Donnie Anderson. There's a number of Red Raider former greats here tonight to honor Dave Parks. And Donnie Anderson, what a career. Collegiately and the pro ranks as well. I love the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Go down. Some great names. Punches his way into the clear and Donnie leaves the world behind. 90 rambling touchdown yards. I love it. <laughs> I love the music. we got to resurrect yeah. that music. How do we get that? Oh, I was into the Gillette look sharp march. Friday night fights. <laughs> Two-time All-American Donnie Anderson here to honor Dave Parks. Great running back for the Red Raiders. We saw a 90-yard run against TCU in that flashback. And National you know, College Player of the Year in 1965. Yeah, Dave was talking about uh, you know getting the honor, being inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame. I, I got that phone call, and it was, it was a unique experience. And I mean, you just never realized that you know if you think about you know going into the College Football Hall of Fame, that's a that's a tremendous honor. You think of all the players right. that have come before you and how many guys are there. Kind of hard to sink in. And I saw you laugh when he goes, "I'm into it." Yeah, yeah <laughs> you definitely got to be into it. Third down coming up, we saw Andrew McKinney on the field, the senior from Decatur, Texas. Running back there. Early action this year, most of the play on special teams last year. Need only three, trailing by 29. It was available early, and it's overthrown and intercepted. Daniel Charbonnet, three it's intercepted his third on the night. Of the night for Charbonnet. And that's a school record for Texas Tech. Had a lot of guys with two interceptions before in the uh, in their career into a single ball game but Daniel Charbonnet with the hat trick well that's going to go down to the single season record books you're going to see the line it's going to go right through here is where Bo Levi Mitchell is going to want to throw this football and Charbonnet is going to get to the outside and he's going to play the flat out there he's just going to react on the football it is overthrown not a great throw by Mitchell but just a heady play by Daniel Charbonnet and in that formation he had his wide receiver on the left side towards the boundary Gary wide open and he only needed three yards but it was like he was locked in on one guy he's thrown that route a lot tonight that that slant you know that little slant and corner route and there's taylor charbonnet his, his brother that's giving him breathing room again battling his way to a first down tough running past the 25 out of the 27. not a big guy 510 511 but he's strong at 200 plus pounds well, i told you i like batch and i like the uh, Shannon Woods, the one-two punch back there. This is good stuff for Graham Harrell. He's going to help his offense out a lot. The guys up front, they just lock up. So that's going to be a first down. And a little shovel for back. Running past his blocker, but it didn't make any difference. So he got another.
another first down. He wasn't going to wait for the offensive lineman rather than no, Reed no. on that side, was he? I tell you, Brandon Carter, the right guard, you know, I love him. But, he, you know, at 6'7", 350 pounds, I don't think that the, he's going to have any problem, chance to get there. He's the right guard and going to come around here. And let's take a look here as a – see the little shovel pass here, and they get, the goal, get going out there. Just go out, run those big guys and run around the defense as well. That's showing he's got that – I told you that burst. From the 42. First downs on the ground, Baron Batch. It'll be Shannon Woods this time, making a miss. And another guy showing how tough he can be, spinning across the midfield stripe for just about nine. But this is a defense that has given up 46 a game over the first two, and close to 500 yards per game over the first two. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with company that supports college football. Overstock.com, at home with the O. Now, is Texas Tech finally going to come through as we look at them roll it up now on SMU? Need a yard and a half for the first down. Flag on the play. And I bring that up because of the great start they had last year with the second half of the season, the way things dropped off. And dropped off at a big time, losing three of four in the second half. Get this call first. Legal use of the hands, hands to the face, offense, number 71. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot remains second down. This is center, Stephen Hamby, a senior from San Antonio. Gary, Tech has not won an outright conference title since 55 when they were in the border conference. They haven't won 10 games in a season since 1976. Well, I'll tell you, this program, though, Mike Leach has done a good job with it, but consistently winning and contending in the Big 12, particularly in the Big 12 South, it's really been the one thing that he has not been able to get over. You've got Oklahoma, you've got the University of Texas, you've got some story programs that pick up the blitz. Going down as Hawk to make the catch. You, know, you talk about successful Brandon. seasons, eight, nine win seasons. Well, you know, Texas Tech has put those together and right. also the bowl, the bowl bids and those kinds of things. But I think they're ready to make that next step. And the commitment they are, they're made with their football team is, is to go with Mike Leach and go with what he's doing and bring into this program. The thing that they need to improve, and they've always needed to improve since he's been here, is the defensive side of the ball. There has been measured improvement with Ruffin McNeil as a defensive coordinator with this system. We've got some notes here and some things we'll talk about here later in the ball game about what that defense needs to do. But overall, it hasn't been something that I think that fan, fans are really, you know, really excited. They're excited about the opportunity for them to contend for the Big 12 championship. Carroll on the screen. That was plugged up the middle. Woods on the outside, breaking a tackle. And the sideline gets a block. McCann slows him down inside the 20. So broken tackles down to the 15. Well, I talked about yak, which is yards after catch. Well, that's your yards after contact. Whatever you want to call it, the same thing. And this is what Shannon Woods do, does for you out there on the outside. Looks like he should be tackled for a very, very short gain on the outside. And, but he, what he does is just continue down the field and get through the would-be tacklers. There's one, there's two missed tackles. You can't arm tackle or block tackle on this back. You got to wrap him up and bring him down. He just got great acceleration as well. And a pretty good effort there by the rest of the Pony defense to get to him. So first and 10, down to the 15. Going down is Britain hanging onto the football though. Inside the seven, short of the first down. Seven by a couple. Mike Leach in his eight seasons here at Jack. Is that the jump ball? Yeah, really. Gives in his kick. eight years, though, you brought up getting over the hump. They've won at least seven every year, not more than nine. Right. So and you brought up the competition. And you're in the same division with Oklahoma and Texas, and Oklahoma State's going to have a very good team this year. South is tough. Oh, jump ball, right. Britain. Falling down, didn't make any difference. He's got a touchdown tackle. He's just passed Cliff Kingsbury as the all-time touchdown passing leader in Texas Tech history. Well, down here to the near sideline on the jump ball, and good job, good adjustment on the deep, on the offensive side there for Britain getting, getting away from Brian McCann and getting, hold, getting his hands on the football. Well thrown by quarterback Graham Harrell. Corona for the extra point. It's good. So Graham Harrell all by himself now. As he has surpassed the total of Cliff Kingsbury with that toss to Britain. 
We have a time out of the field with 3.52 to play in the third. And Texas Tech looking like the ranking of the number 12 team in the nation. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues from Lubbock, Texas. And a really beautiful night here in West Texas. Just about an hour drive from the New Mexico border. And we're inside of four to play in the third. All Texas Tech. Too many mistakes now as there have been too many interceptions thrown. Three belonging to Charbonnet. Four overall. And it's taken by Henderson. And check that. Instead of Butler bringing it back, Chris Butler. And he'd make it to 20, only the 19-yard line as we head back to the studio. John Radigan. Game of the millennium in Nebraska, guys. And check this out. How about Joe Gann? He threw for one, he caught one, and he uh, ran for one. He's the first player since Eric Crouch to do that. And look at Mike McNeil as he flips into the end zone. You think I'm being a little too generous on my descriptions of these games, guys? Nebraska, New Mexico, Nebraska, New Mexico State, Actually, Millennium. Yeah. You got a lot of M's in there. That's pretty good. John, we, we think you're understating. You're understating. Things. Logan Turner has taken over at quarterback. 5'11", 180-pound redshirt freshman, Springtown, Texas. An opportunity to run it out of the pocket, and he will to the 25, and he gets about six. That's so, a smart play. <laughs> we were waiting for Bo Levi Mitchell to do that a couple of times when he only needed a yard or two. Yet he threw it for 40, trying to get 40 or 50 yard games. Uh, he's going to be the quarterback of the future. Without I think that June Jones has definitely got uh, his eyes set on that young man. Being a talented player, a talented quarterback, and just didn't have a good night. You know, he threw some bad balls, bad decisions, and you know, I was going to get a chance to watch the sidelines and kind of learn from there. It's a young man, quarterback right now, that had a very successful high school career. State 4A in Springtown. Cooper. Better than 3,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. And now an opportunity to run it, but he'll throw it. And timing it well because it was intended for Wilkerson. McBath, who's got a pick. Darcel McBath, the senior safety back there, did a good job of breaking up. And he's a returning starter from last year and has played a pretty efficient ball game. Roman secondary here against this SMU defense. And McBath is a hitter also. Good job knocking that one away. It'll bring up third to about four. So the opportunity to get some other guys on the field like Zach Zimmerman, a junior from Flower Mound, Texas. He's out there at wide receiver. There were some other guys on film for Gene Jones and his staff at game speed. On the deflection, almost another interception. Guess he was there. Yep, Chabonet again as it was <laughs> poked away by Roland. Well, free safety. Why, well, my goodness, he had a tip earlier that was deflected and he went and got it. But this one, Daniel, you got to have a little longer arms. He's, you know, just a paltry night of three interceptions. It's a chair somebody. Yeah. Take a look at this one here. The ball's off the hands. Defender knocks it away and Charbonnet, oh. Just thinking, wow, a fourth one got away. So a punt coming up for Thomas Morstead. It'll be Eric Morris. Waiting back inside the 35. And you look at the schedule, and we will for Texas Tech. Wow. And there's a beauty. He got his money's worth. It'll be out of bounds, but there's good distance on that, baby. It'll be out of bounds right about the 20-yard line. And our thoughts, our condolences go out to the family of Eddie Crowder, one of the greats in Colorado Buffalo history. Played his college ball. At Oklahoma, former Sooners quarterback, and then the head coach, AD at Colorado, and just a great representative for that university for so long. We we talked about him a couple of weeks ago on the air when we were doing the Colorado Colorado State game. We were hoping for the best. And unfortunately, we learned the passing of Eddie Crowder over the last couple of days. Yeah, kind of built that Colorado program, and very much remembered back there with the Buffalo program. And uh, sad day. It'll be a first down for Harold. Play action didn't fool anybody. But on the comeback trail, it's Crabtree. Harold does throw very well while backpedaling. That strong of an arm as he took a shot at the end of the play. Well, he's getting getting a lot of pressure there. Lazy, the number 99, the defensive tackle, putting pressure on the quarterback, and Crabtree just running down the field and sees his quarterback in trouble. What does he do? He goes straight back towards the quarterback and give him a chance to recover. Graham Harrelton showing his toughness out there. 
little more than two to play in the third. And start looking at what point do you get Harrell out of the game with a shovel to Shannon Woods. Good open field tackle. Coming up, making that play banjo. So it'll be third down and about three still. When you look at the schedule for Texas Tech, they've got UMass coming up, then they're at K-State, Nebraska, AM. You count those wins. They're seven and oh by the time they get to Kansas in Lawrence on October 25th. And I talked about five and one. The start they had last year before they lost three of four. And Missouri was in there, and they were, we'll get over what they did lose last year because they were quality opponents, but still. Colorado was the bigger shot, and that was here. And that's going to be short of the first down. That's a nice open field tackle by Darius Bell, uh, the wideout swindle. Now, looking at that schedule, you, if you can pull it off, UMass. Okay, that's at home. You should. K-State. That's an improving football Without team. a doubt, Josh Freeman, a junior quarterback now. He's played this third year as a starter. They're going to go for it, by the way, which is not a shot. Fourth, and I don't think they got it. Now they did with the surge. <laughs> there was no whistle and a smart play on the sneak. He stayed with it and got the first down. That's Graham Harrell. Well, let's take a look back at that schedule because it becomes daunting as you go further down the line with Texas Tech with their football team. and. Mike Leach, he's, you know, he's got to you know, kind of play this season in, in kind of segments and take a look at Graham Harrell here getting the first down, gets his head down, and then the, the late surge here is what allows him to get over the top. He was almost taken away early. Final minute of the third, dominated once again by Texas Tech. They were up 22 to nothing at the half. It's now a 36-point advantage. Huge hold again for Woods. Slashes his way. Going almost against the grain as he takes it across the 40 out to the 42. Well, Shannon will just show the explosiveness. Just watch him run through that hole and see how quick he really is. And strong lower body lets allows him to break tackles. It's like he's 100% this season, no doubt. So another first down. They're happy coming in with their 30 down conversions. They've succeeded in most areas now. The opening 0 10, 12 minutes of play. Nice move by Morris for the short game. After all is said and done of about five, and that's going to be the final play of the third 15. And they've got to be pleased with what they've done defensively because they gave up some big plays last week, but they did a good job on red zone series defensively. So we'll come back. We'll continue from Lubbock. Red Raiders dominating the Mustangs. SMU took the mistake so by SMU early, and it cost them. Tech capitalized. So through three, 36 to nothing, Red Raiders. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Suzuki. Reason to smile if you're a Red Raider. They're on top, 36 to nothing. Big 12 College Football Saturday continues from Lubbock. Joel Myers along with Gary Reasons, Emily Jones, Sunday night. Television's biggest night with the Sunday sports block. All starts with the best damn top 50, followed by baseball's golden age, then amazing sports stories, and finally it's Affliction Band. Sunday sports block. Four shows in a row beginning tomorrow at 7 p.m. That Grand Hill still out there to start the fourth quarter. And you surprised? Well, he's got 373 yards passing in the ball game. Just, just a workmanlike effort. And could easily eclipse 400 or more. Second and five. Batch bolts, but he's dropped short of the first down as we look. And, and Gary, I want your thoughts on what Mike Leach told as you look at the disparity in the numbers through three quarters when Mike Leach said everybody seemed to rush over the first couple of weeks with a new 40-second clock, but they didn't have to. No, he felt that he likes the rule. He likes the 40-second clock. He thinks that it kind of keeps the officiating crews pretty much on target. It's consistency of placing the ball, so the offenses and defenses both know, you know when that ball potentially could be snapped. So he likes the rule. And he thought the teams were hurrying. They really didn't have to. And he got plenty of time to work there. And he's going to snap this with about 10, 15 seconds left on the play clock. So Making a miss. You know, it's been it's been really pretty much a non-factor, I think, the, the new rule of the 42nd clock. And it has kept games more consistent with how the officials are, are placing the ball. Another first down from Baron Batch. Now, 
Mike was dead on when he said earlier in the week to us we talked about Woods in the running game and he said Baron Batch to him has been the most impressive out of the backfield and he's going to earn a lot of snaps with what we've seen tonight. Uh, looking at our advanced auto parts and some of the numbers we've been going through and our leaders. Now we're going to talk about uh, June Jones and actually what he's accomplished with some of his uh, star quarterbacks in the in the history of college football and take from from Timmy Chang to Colt Brennan and and now to Bo Levi Mitchell and you can see the numbers that they're that where they're at Colt Brennan in 2005 and 2006 number one passing leader and and the same thing kind of goes in stride with with Mike Leach you just look at the numbers there over with these two two coaches over the last seven years they have produced the number one passing quarterback in the country so these two guys know how to get it done offensively. Harrell after the play fake wings it out to Morris in the open field his knee was down. So he's down at the 43 on first down again of about two. Gary there is no question in my mind after you saw what June Jones did in nine years at Hawaii. And it's ironic because this is the ninth year for Mike Leach that the Mustangs are going to be back. SMU is going to be able to recruit with this group. They're, they have a good staff. June Jones knows what he's doing. He's already got 20 commitments. He said there's one player who's thinking about Oklahoma, and they he was surprised him. that he got him. Yeah, yeah that's what you're going to get because you're fine. you've got an offense that has put players in the National Football League. It's explosive. It's a way to recruit from skilled players, quarterbacks, the big linemen, the offensive linemen. They're working all pass blocking, which is in vogue. You've got to do that in the National Football League. It's not the whole run game anymore. That one's up for grabs. Man. They couldn't come down with it, but double coverage as it was floating. One of the few four passes tonight by Graham Harrell, at least deep balls. He's thrown a couple behind receivers, but yeah. deep balls. And June told us, too, he says, you know, there, there's kind of a renewed enthusiasm at SMU with, uh, with with what's going on there. Kind of hasn't, they haven't had that same type of enthusiasm since the Pony Express days. And so when you talk about uh, the guys that were there with that era, with Eric Dickerson and Greg James. Yeah, don't forget. Those guys, it, it was tremendous for the national championship. We showed the earlier clip of the miracle on 4th Street, which happened, which happened here. So, And it wasn't that long ago. 25 years is not a long time ago. And they had the death penalty yeah. in 87. And I think that took a lot of wind out of the sails of that program, no doubt. The offensive back fell down, so there goes Deton Lewis. Blown assignment, missed tackles, touchdown, Texas Tech. Well, the one thing you try to work for on any football team in any position is consistency. And Tom Mason, the defensive coordinator for SMU, is really trying to you know, get his young defensive group out there to play consistently. And what they're doing tonight is anything but consistent. Missing tackles, missed assignments, opportunities to make plays to negate these big plays. But give credit to Texas Tech. They are skilled athletes, skilled players, and they're going to make you miss sometimes and break some of those tackles. Corona with the point after. So after a seven play, 88 yard drive, this was 11th, covering 84 yards. And Texas Tech, domination. 43 to nothing over the Mustangs, SMU. The night continues in Lubbock for the Red Raiders. Pitching a shutout as Butler waits back deep. And he'll bring it a couple of yards out of the end zone. Nothing available. Not back to the 20, only to the 19. So while we talk about the offense, and there's a lot to discuss with 592 total yards, let's not forget the Texas Tech is pitching a shutout. And Ruffin McNeil took over as their defensive coordinator four games into last season and they have definitely been a different team. They really have and I've, I enjoyed talking with him this week and understand a little bit about his mindset about what he's trying to accomplish with his team. He wants his team to attack. He wants his downhill linebackers play downhill and their defensive line and their linebackers play downhill. He's attacking the football. The defensive line when they rush forward, which they're going to do right now, they need to get pressure on the quarterback with, uh, with those four. And here's a fumble. Core exchange. 
Martin hangs on to it, though. A new quarterback, second series for Logan Turner. Yeah, a couple more things about Ruffin. You know, he wants some emphasis points, Joel, with his defense. He wants aided with aggressiveness. What that means is anything he does, just do it aggressively. And then they tackle it where they would patch. You can become consistent tackling. And the one thing that I really thought was impressive, what he told his team last year and carried into this year, is they've eliminated too much thinking. He says if you got a clouded mind, it means slow legs. If you got a clear mind, it means fast legs. I like that philosophy because it takes away the thinking. Let's just play as a player, and defense is all about reaction and going to the football. Yeah, pure in thought. There's a lot to be said for that. We're more than 12 minutes to play. Turner, widely intended target. Wilkerson, as we head downstairs, Emily. Well, guys, Ruffin McNeil has always been the emotional leader of this defensive coaching staff. And when he got named defensive coordinator, the players really took it personally and wanted to play well for him. They're a guy, he's a guy that they want to play hard for. And they want him to succeed, and they know in order for him to succeed, they've got to succeed. So he really is a guy that these guys get up for. And uh, Emily, I love what he said about their overall philosophy as a team. As all of a sudden, the band got real loud out of nowhere. But he said they never lose. Time just ran out. And that's Mike's way of thinking. Mike Leach, that didn't lose. Time ran out. Would have gotten him, gotten the best of him, had he had more time. Turner in trouble. Man on the deflection. Off the hands of the D-back and Emmanuel Sanders. Good and Jamar there. Wall almost got to it. Jamar Wall doing a good job of just knocking that ball away. You know, the never say die attitude. You know, and Coach Leach now, he, he's put some pressure on some defense coordinators here with what he how he calls his offense you know going for it on fourth down as much as he does you know you'd think you'd want to you know play a little conservative and maybe give your defense a chance but rough of the deal just kind of shrug your shoulders as this oh, we don't even worry about that we just play whatever whatever hand is dealt us and that's what they've done and that's how they're going to continue to do it here at texas tech this is such a young team that they're facing tonight and as you saw june jones on the sideline he is truly a teacher more than ever this year they started their season they had the opener, 12 true freshmen on the field. That's a lot for any program. Eric Morris goes by Butler, and then with a the flag down on the play, he's taken down by Smart. Well, I think we've got the uh, the number one kicker in the conference there. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Ray Hunter. Guy Award finalist. There's no question. He might be the best in the country. Yeah, hey, Morris has got some rocket shots. Yeah, and... Morstead's going to be a finalist for the Ray Guy Award. Sort things out. Texas Tech will get it back. You know, his mom is uh, from Britain. You know, just, uh, just an English gal. And he, uh, he didn't start playing, uh, learn to play uh, football by playing a little bit of rugby and watching that. And their special teams will, they'll be better under Frank Gantz. Yeah. I don't think there's any question. Well, they're going to be committed to, to, you know, for preparation, Given effort, and you don't uh, you don't meet those things. Frank Gans ain't gonna have you on the on, on the field. And, and we were talking about SMU. To me, there is still a mystique about the Hilltop. It's only 25 years ago they were the number one team in the nation, and then they the with the death penalty, it really took a long time. Yeah, and you know I was there. I actually went and visited June uh, this summer. while I stopped by at SMU, and I saw the facilities and everything. And, and it's a tremendous there place to recruit. There were two fouls to. on the play. Illegal block in the back. During the return, number 47. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run, first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 22 against the return team. Number 22 has been disqualified. That 15 yard penalty will additionally be enforced, first down, timeout. So Deshaun Sanders is gone. Mm -hmm. Well, personal foul, gonna get you out of the game. And a little bit extra curricular there. We'll watch Sean Sanders, number 22. There's a block in the back. We'll come right back with Tech Up and the football. College Football Saturday is presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals, lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. And brought to you in part by Cargo. We collaborate, create, and succeed in bringing better ideas and food to the customers. Joel Myers, Gary Reese, and Emily Jones back in Lubbock. It'll be at the 14 for the Red Raiders, or for the Mustangs, rather. And Turner trying to split him, and oh, right through the hands of Robinson. 
What a throw. Caught him in stride. Could put it out there better. Well, Turner's showing a pretty good arm there, stepping up into that throw and right through the hands of the receiver going streaking straight down the field. Nothing going to impede him and steps up in the pocket nicely. He thinks he's going to have his first long pass of his career, but uh, not to happen. This is sophomore from Waxahachie. Played as a true freshman last year. It'll be second and 10 for the 14. Final 931. Turner underneath. And it's a first down. Sanders put it on the ground, though. Loose ball. And did SMU give it back? Looked like one of the offensive linemen fell on him around the 20. They did. So they wrestled for it. Tech comes out of the pile with the football. They had already signaled, though. They belong to SMU. And the back judge is saying it was a catch right here for a first down to the 34. The ruling on the field is that the runner's forward progress was stopped at the 29 yard line. First down. They call it the 29, rather. It is a first down. And that's a good positive play for SMU and engage an opportunity for a potential turnover again. So there's the forward progress. He's stopped the ball. Yeah, then comes out. It's a good call, I think. Move the sticks. And the running back takes it, weaves up to the 35 at Butler. For about six, we go down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, June Jones has been around this game for a very long time, but his perspective changed a bit in 2001 when he was in a very, very awful one-car accident in Hawaii. And he was in the hospital for a few weeks in a coma for almost two weeks. When he woke up, the doctor said it would be a few months before he would be able to go home. Well, a week after he woke up from his coma, he snuck out of the hospital in the middle of the night and never went back. He has it has given him an entirely new view on life, on football. He says, of course, I want to do great things with these guys as football players. But even more than that, I have no idea why I lived, uh, you know, why my life was spared and how I continue to go on. But I will make it my purpose now to do more than just coach football. I'm trying to make an impact on these guys' lives. Yeah, Emily, and he put it bluntly to us yesterday when we met with him again because we had talked to him earlier in the week and he said that I have better perspective overall in life now. <laughs> well, football coaches overall, Joel, they are, you know, they're, they're mentors or teachers of young men. And you take that really to heart when you have a life-changing or life-altering event. And June certainly had that and really struck the, the Hawaii community very, very hard when that occurred. And the throw there. Yeah, Sanders. A nice throw from Turner. The, the doctor said you have to be able to make it around the hospital, which was the total <laughs> complex. And he, every day he got a little bit better and he got closer. So finally he did it, but the doctor wasn't ready to let him no, go. And so that night at about 2 in the morning when the doctor wasn't going to let him go, June told us, he said, took out the plugs, took out the IV. I had my buddy come over at 2 I, and I bolted. <laughs> he <laughs> never <laughs> went back. <laughs> he still has some lingering effects. That was a terrible accident. Horrible. He really had some problems. Actually severed his AOR which is a, a very, very uh, serious injury and lucky to, lucky to come away from that one. But now he's on the sideline doing what he loves, working with working with players, you know, still coaching football and being instrumental in young men's lives. And I think he feels like that's his calling. He's been at this game a long time, been the head coach in the National Football League, two stints, both in San Diego and in, for the Atlanta Falcons, coaching uh, a lot of different a lot of different levels. And, you know, he's had a huge impact on college football. Well, let's hear it from June Jones himself on how that accident has changed his life. I just uh, have, have a whole different kind of perspective about why I'm coaching, you know, not just to win football games, but to affect these young men and to, 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 to teach them how to, how to be men and teach them about life. And, and uh, that's what I try to do. Seven and a half to play. And June Jones has definitely impacted a lot of young men. Just talked to the Rainbows over the last nine years at the University of Hawaii, where he was honest. He said, I got frustrated. And that's a nice run by Butler. I thought it was also 
interesting with the way he tagged him. He said, I became, before Bill Walsh died over the last few years, I, I, I got to know him pretty well over the last 10 years of his life. And, and Coach Walsh said to me, in this day and age, if you can stay in one place for nine or 10 years, you've really had a good, solid run. Yeah, there's a lot of turnover in, in, in programs, college sports. Now, even in the National Football League, there's, you've got to win today. The, the mindset is you got to win immediately. And having longevity, having to be able to stay there and you know, commit to your program, commit to what you're doing, it's not as common as it used to be. And uh, for him to have that run at Hawaii, he's, he hopes to have that similar run at SMU. Turner and a breakdown. His receiver got all tangled up. He was looking at Wilkerson, but using double coverage and bumped a couple along the way. And that was the second and four. The third down coming. Trying to avoid the shutout with 6.46 to play. Nobody wants to be shut out in football. So let's see what they can do about at least getting three out of the series. On the other side, though, Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator, Texas Tech, I don't care who you're facing. He likes it zero. Yeah, who you're going up against and where they are. Where they are. That's an accomplishment. So now third and four. And it'll be a timeout call. Please do not play music over the loudspeaker when SMU is in formation. Third down. It's not a bad idea. Now that's actually a rule, you know, when yes. they break the huddle, all the loudspeakers you know, anything from the PA system must be stopped as the team breaks the huddle. But in today's environment, there's sugar huddles. They're right there line of scrimmage. That's going to be harder for Hunt, for, for I think, the clock operator, and not the clock operators, but the sound system operators in the, in the stadium to really adjust to. They need four. Butler turning the corner. Man, what a play. Going to be short, Yeah, by McKinner Dixon, uh, Lufkin Jr., who got him around the collar and just held on. The junior college transfer come in here and done a good job. Had a sack tonight, three on the season, and both bring up the defensive line play. So it's going to bring up a fourth down here for SMU. So the clock's rolling. They'll go for it. They're not going to kick three just to make sure they avoid a shutout. Good at Butler staying in the backfield. It's been a nice drive. It started for SMU back on their own 14. Now coming out. SMU. SMU, timeout number one. This will be a medium timeout. We'll take one. It's official now. It's a media timeout. 6.06 to play. We'll come right back. Well, will they maintain the shutout? That's only the only thing in doubt right now for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The number 12 team in the nation. Up 43 to nothing. And a fourth and one for SMU. Protect. They're on a short side option pitch. Get the first down easily. As Butler is belted out of bounds at about the 15. Not good confidence in that play and the operation with the quarterback bringing it down the line of scrimmage. And Logan Turner doing a pretty good job of pitching it down. You get him committed inside and pitch the ball outside. Probably not a play that you're looking for on third and short as a defense. Coach Conville trying to rally his troops and get him, get him to shut that down to stop that fourth, fourth, fourth down conversion. So first down of the deepest penetration of the night for SMU. Turn a room up the middle and almost intercepted again. Read perfectly by the D-back coming up. Jumping to Anthony Hines. Yeah, Anthony Hines did a good job reading that. He's in his deep safety spot and don't need to go deeper than the end zone because that's where the ball's going to get there. Number 23 is going to come up and he'll break down on this ball. Probably should catch his football though because he has a plenty clean break. Gets it in his hands and it would have been another interception for uh, for the defense. Yeah, he had too much real estate. Problem. That would have been a lot of real estate. <laughs> he was thinking about it. Five and a half to play. Second and 10 for the 15. Nothing there for Butler. Wow. Boy, what a play again by Dixon. Yep. And he's had some kind of start, a junior college transfer from Lufkin. Well, you're playing on the block, and then you make contact on the back, and everybody goes to the ground. That, that means that shows me great power, power explosion, and, and leverage underneath the blocker and also the uh, 
get the running back down. Back to the sideline, Emily Jones. Well, guys, McKinnard Dixon was actually second team freshman All American for this Texas Tech team in 2005. Had some great issues, then transferred to Cisco Junior College, and as you can see, anxious to get back at it with Tech this season. Making the most of the opportunity on third down, little shovel. Butler's got room and he's got blocks. And he followed him pretty well. He got nine. Right at the first down marker, real close. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's shy by inches, depending upon the spot. You got magnifying glass and I'm If they seen. give it to the <laughs> near, actually, he's going to have the first down. That's close. But yeah, they gave it to the linesman on the near side, and he put it right on the five where he needed to go. He got a good spot. It'll be first and goal. They didn't like this spot. <laughs> they never happy. Rolling personnel defensively for Texas Tech in there. You're up 43. Five yard line, goal line area. Is it that hot down there tonight? And this is where Texas Tech's offense is a lot different than what SMU has. No tight end, no, uh, no two running back sets. They're going to go with the three wide receivers at the side or four in the ball game. Behind the intended target. Man, that was the first throw in the direction of Justin Willis. And June's offense is predicated a lot more for the old run and shoot, which had no tight end whatsoever on the roster. And here in the goal line area, inside the five yard line, you think you might want to pow play power football and run the football at the defense, but there's really nothing that, that they're going to try to line up and do. He doesn't have that tight end system in there or a power running game. Willis is trying to pull to Kerry Meyer. And Kerry Meyer's done a good job of it. Former quarterback Willis was. Honorable mention all conference USA last year is the quarterback for SMU. Started all 12, the junior from Denton. So he stays out there in the slot. Looking at him and in and out of his hands with a flag down at the end of the play for the referee where you normally see a holding call. But I like it. One quarterback going to another quarterback. Well, Todd Reesing and Gary Meyer, they've got that worked out pretty well. So I didn't get anything close to that with Willis and either the two quarterbacks for SMU, then that'll be uh, something impressive. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 92. Wow. After this is Fresh out of downs right there. Automatic. Automatic. First down. That's the look of a dejected defensive coordinator. So 402 to play and the opportunity to finally get in the end zone for SMU. They had chances if you join us late. They had some opportunities early, but they beat themselves with mistakes. Yes. Too many interceptions. Three in the first half in particular. Four tosses for the game from Bo Levi Mitchell, who's going to be a good quarterback. He's got a big time arm. But the decisions have to be better. That was a false start. Dead ball foul coming up. False start. Awesome. Number 63. Spot in a and we also remind you one of the problems, and it started at the very beginning of the game. That's a true freshman we're looking at. Blake McJunkin, who's the starting center tonight out of Plano. And it's not his fault. Mitch Enright broke a finger a couple of days ago. They're starting junior center out of South Lake. So pointers already gone. Enright, Loribus. They've got problems offensively because of the big linemen, and they're hurt. You know, the depth just is not there, so you got to go with what you have. And... Now take it back to the seven. It'll be first and goal from there. Turner. And low and away as he tried to get it out there. And going in that direction was Cole Lofton. Yeah, he got, caught the football, but uh, gained maybe a foot. So that was a tough one. His first grab of the game. Goes after football nicely, but uh, not getting a whole lot of positive yards there. Very near where the, the down marker is. So. And now, timeout has been taken. We'll keep it right here with 3.35 to play. So two timeouts on the board still for Tech. They should stay that way. And one remaining now after that call by June Jones. Uh, this young man did not know that he was going to get this much playing time tonight. That many snaps, and that's Logan Turner. But Harold and Crabtree, the story tonight again for Texas Tech. And no shock. All right, what a burger, what a play. 
You know, Crabtree available down the middle of the field. That has been that way on the, the crossing pattern for him tonight. Yeah, I've had some miscues, I think, in the secondary. And really, responsibilities of what you're supposed to do in the secondary. You can't let a big guy like that run as free as he has. And, and he's going to break tackles, too. He's, he's just such a huge receiver, a great target. Had a tremendous evening. And see the numbers here, the eight grabs and three touchdowns. So pretty, pretty impressive night for Michael Crabtree. But I tell you what, you know, June, uh, uh, Mike Leach was talking about X receivers and Z receivers not catching the football. Who's the starting X? So was he talking about Michael Crabtree at that point? <laughs> you and I both know that. <laughs> He's talking about just catching balls in general. It'll be second and goal from the seventh. Trainer got it, finally. Aldrich Robinson hangs on, touchdown SMU. They're on the board. You give that to the offense, simultaneous, almost a simultaneous catch by the defense and the offense, but going to give Robinson the touchdown there. Lane Turner, uh, Logan Turner tossing the ball in the end zone and get a score for the, for the Mustangs. A little turn in or out for Robinson. A guy that can run. There's no question. They've got some speedsters. Now they need to get up the football. Last week, Robinson had eight grabs for 172 Texas yards in their win. Number two. This will be a 30 second. And timeout. Tech has called a timeout. And another look on the lone score of the night for SMU. It's presence in the pocket and just going inside, just being a being a, a receiver here and goes up and catches it, pulls it down. So it's 329 to play. And looking ahead for the Mustangs of SMU of Conference USA and what they've got remaining. The TCU, that's not going to be easy. And they start conference play with Tulane. Central Florida, Tulsa, Houston. Houston lost a real difficult game by three to Air Force 31 28 yesterday. I don't think there's any doubt that over time that uh, this program is going to compete with the rest of the conference and Conference USA. June Jones is going to get that, uh, get to think that, that program in shape to be able to compete there. Yeah, they tried to. The time I was taken because Texas Tech was not prepared at the time, and Leach also challenged the play. It looked like he brought it in, brought it down, and then the defensive back went to try to claw it away once he was already on the ground. I think you're right, Joel. I think that's what it was. And trying to think that the defender might have got that ball simultaneous or actually had the interception, but I think that uh, he definitely has confidence. Robinson has, and then he just rolls over and comes away with it, and that's after the fact. He's already down. He's down, touchdown, got it there. And L.A. Reed, who's back in the lineup for Texas Tech, coming off an injury, and they think he's having a, have a, have a pick. Doesn't not going to happen. And in a 43-6 game, this is what we needed. So, USC is on top right now, 21-3, with nine minutes left in the third. As John Radigan called it, the game of the century. Mm. The millennium was saved for Nebraska, wasn't yes. it? <laughs> After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball did not touch the ground. Touchdown. Texas Tech will be charged a timeout. Their second timeout. Well, 43-6 now. Chance to tack on another point and make it a seven. Morstead in the point after. He's also their place kicker. And last year, to be an idea how talented these young men is. He was 13 of 20. And he had three of 50 yards or better out of the 13. Good size young man, too. 6 5. Mm. And he will be there at the next level. Boy, and to have a putter that can also back up your place kicker. Man. So it's a 43 to 7 game. Final three and a half. And don't forget next week, college football Saturday. Presented by Acura and Suzuki. It'll be back. Arizona taking on a UCLA team that really took it today on the road to BYU. It's a Pac-10 opener for both the Wildcats and the Bruins. And then Rice is looking to upset eighth-ranked Texas, the Longhorns, matching up with the Owls. Coverage will all start at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific.
in high definition. Big 12 college football Saturday. We mentioned this a couple of times earlier in the telecast. For those of you who would like to help those affected by Hurricane Ike in Texas, also the ones who were impacted in Louisiana, you can you can donate to the American Red Cross, and that money is going to be earmarked, targeted toward the Texans and those in Louisiana. You can call 800 Red Cross, 800 Red Cross, or go to redcross.org. Good thought. And our best and our prayers with all those people that have been displaced once again. Man. Yeah, we had a unique thing here the day before the game. We actually uh, didn't know if we were going to have a ball game because of water, too. Not the hurricane, but torrential rains here in Lubbock. And I, I had some problems in this area as well. I came in on Thursday. It was a monsoon. They had eight inches. And I guess about 14, 16 hours here. Their average rainfall, I'll get back to that, is going to be taken from the goal line. And across the 20, out to the 25 for the Red Raiders on the return. It was Ron Moore. Well, the pumps went bad because they had not been capable to really handle this much water. So the and Lubbock Fire there. Department came in to pump it out. There was two feet of water at the crown. That's the middle of the field. Right. So you got to go. They had at least four feet standing on the sidelines to the bench. They got it done. And they were done at about 3 34 o'clock yesterday. 800,000 gallons of water had to be pumped off of this field. 800,000 gallons. And they did it in about five hours. Right. Pretty impressive by those, uh, by those fire trucks. They wouldn't let us in. Does that one just float? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and average rainfall, don't forget, in Lubbock is 18 inches an entire 12-month period. Mm -hmm. So they got 8 inches in about 16 hours. You can understand why they were overwhelmed. Lakes on the streets, Emily Jones. Yeah, yeah, guys, when you talk to the, the, the grounds crew here today, they asked them about what all they did after the fire trucks left, after they pumped all of that water off of the field here. And they said, as crazy as this sounds, we actually sprayed it down again today because we had to get, yeah, you had to clean it and get all the stuff off of it. So uh, they had every bit of confidence in, uh, in the, the fact that it was going to get back up and working. But um, it, it looked pretty crazy here yesterday. Well, nice if, throw. I wonder if they actually put a little low. Uh, to kill the bacteria off of it. There's a lot of water in there. That's with a great throw. Yeah, it was. And it Hawk just... caught it in stride. Kind of a laser there, and Big Hawk there. Big 6 4 receiver coming across. Gets the nice ball. So, first down for Tech. And I was devastated when I did arrive because all these closures. First of all, 27 was closed completely. The freeway it, you pick up at the airport. Put a bump off the batch. Uh oh. He got a couple of blocks down with another first down inside the 28. And all of these streets were closed, Gary. Now I'm trying to get to Rudy's barbecue <laughs> before they close. And I was weaving my way everywhere because all the streets were closed. Q Street closed. And I jogged over. If you're wondering why Texas Tech continues to throw the football, well, that's just their offense. That's what they do. They just, it wasn't a long pass. This is, but that's, just a that's their run offense. Run by batch. <laughs> you said it best. That's the way they play. We'll give it to Woods as he breaks the tackle. And fortunately, stays in bounds as took a pretty good pop, didn't he? Big boy got him. Man, that was Pua Hulu. And that was also Banjo over there. It was a collision this late. Inside of two to play. And now the clock stops when the uh, ball goes out of bounds. Well, that's strange. It looked like he was in bounds. He couldn't remember. <laughs> now nah, he's on the field. He's fine. Breaking the tackle. Another long gain in Swindle. Takes it inside the 10, down to the 7. Just look at the stable of receivers that Mike Leach has here with this football team. And Tremaine Swindle, another young man, 6'3", 175 pounder from Oklahoma City. And they just keep rolling him out there. Lewis, he's he's six foot tall. Michael Crabtree talked about him, 6'3". Adam James, 6'3". Hawk, we talked about him, this size, 6'4". Some tremendous targets, and that's just kind of what he builds his program around with 
skilled quarterbacks and receivers. You're going to throw the football. You're going to commit to it. You're going to commit to getting good, good guys and catch the football with good targets. And they have tall receivers for the most part. You look up and down their roster, and mm -hmm. most of the guys are six feet or larger. They're not 5'7", five, 5'8", five, 5'11". Five, They're well over six feet. Then you got one guy, Eric Morris. He doesn't fit the mold, but quick. Wow. A Texas Tech timeout with 70 seconds to play. Okay. You now they're expanding the stadium. They've already done an addition over on our side. Next year, it's the east side. And that just goes with the success of the program, Gary. Yeah, this is the, the far addition side of the field. And uh, the demand. So here we are in West Texas, an hour from the New Mexico border. But they're turning out, and they're turning on record numbers for this offense and Mike Leach's program. And now his ninth year. They've got a good thing going. But a timeout. Well, that's kind of the arms race. You, know, you build the stadiums, you build the facilities, build the workout rooms and all the academic centers and different things. And here's where the new press box is going to be. Second level over there on the student side. It'll be first and goal at the seven. Wood stays in the backfield. And the quarterback, of course, is Taylor Potts. He's had the last three series for the Red Raiders. There's something more from Abilene. The guy who most likely is going to be taking over for Graham Harrell next year. Woods off balance, otherwise he's in. He took himself down, didn't he, with that lean? He's down to the two. Forward, positive, body lean. That's <laughs> Shannon Woods running the football inside. Down to about the one-yard line, it looks like, Joel. And that's on the two. We'll call it second and goal there. Yeah, this should be the final snap of the game. Well, Texas Tech ranked number 12 in the country, and I think it's a I think it's a well-deserved ranking for them. Powerful football team, and one that's definitely uh, got some talent. Woods, did they get there? Yep. He bounced in, bouncing off people with 27 seconds to play. Batch had 98 yards, Woods up to 89. Nice combination between the two backs, but this is a team that's giving up, don't forget, SMU over the first two games has given up 220 yards per game on the ground. Yeah, they haven't been very salty against the run, and Shannon Woods stretching it out there, and as he falls, the ball crosses the, the plane of the goal line, and this play may be being reviewed upstairs. I guess it is. Looks like the referee's coming to the near sideline and going to take a look at it. <laughs> It's a scoring play, and that's why they're doing it. You know, those are critical plays in ball games, and you know, it's a, it's a critical situation. Texas Tech uh, ahead in this ball game by 36 points, and he's parallel to the knee go down. I think the judgment is on the field. I don't know how you can overturn what they judged on the field. I don't see anything that brings his knee down before that. And after review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner was down at the one yard line. The ball will be put on the one yard line. It will be in second. Yeah, the, the, the knee is down start, before the ball goes across on the lean. Oh, we'll take another look at it here. Where's the knee down? Down. The knee's down right here, and here's the ball. So. Yeah, but that was the last stretch. Knee down. Good call. 27 seconds to play, and they're going to get up to the ball and take another snap. Third down, and they're going to probably try to pop this thing in. Just a guess. What a shot. Just a guess. Well, it'll be 13 consecutive wins for the Red Raiders over the Mustangs. Yeah, 36 point margin of victory. Is that a good, good enough one to win? Right there. Hmm. From the one yard line, the clock will start with my ready for play signal. The officials have done a good job tonight. Yeah, they have. Been a pretty well officiated ball game. Nothing really too critical. That's pretty good stuff right there. So 9.45 local time. Final snap of the game. It should be at least. And it's Woods. He won't get there. 
Not good effort by SMU, keeping it out of the end zone. And I think the Texas Tech is going to allow the clock to expire here. So that'll do it. So Texas Tech rolls to an easy win over SMU. It was decided in the first half at 22 to nothing to the break. A lot of these guys know each other quite well from playing high school football yeah, a lot against of, each other. A lot of Texas kids here on this program, definitely from Texas, uh, for Texas Tech, and a lot, of, a lot of Texas kids as well. So they played the high school football together against each other, and a lot of reacquaintances out there. June Jones, respectful and to Mike Leach and vice versa. And now the two guys we just saw, they're going to be recruiting against each other. Emily Jones. Thanks, Coach. Close to a shutout, but got to be proud of the way your defense played five interceptions tonight. Yeah, I was proud of the way they played. Wish they would have got the shutout. I thought they'd earned it. Uh, anyway, we fell a little short of that, but I really thought they played well. Uh, offensively, uh, we played a lot better the second half. Uh, receivers need to catch the ball better, and uh, I thought the backs ran hard. Everybody talked about this being, and uh, you know, an air attack, and you guys throwing the ball all the time. The, the ground game was very solid tonight. Um, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. Uh, wanted uh, the wanted our second unit to have a chance to score there at the end, and uh, somehow that got taken off the board. But uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> A lot of good, more good than bad. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. We do appreciate it. And, guys, we we now have Graham Harrell, the new career leader in touchdown passes in Texas Tech history, passing Cliff Kingsbury. Graham, were you aware of the record that you set tonight? I, I wasn't, but, uh, you know, it's a great honor. Cliff is a great player, and, uh, you know, there's been a lot of great quarterbacks come through here. So, um, you know, that's a great honor, and it's, uh, you know, a team accomplishment. I have lots of help around me, but, um, like I said, it's, it's a great honor. You know, a lot of people have talked about you and Michael off to that slow start. You know, you only had a couple hundred yards together. <laughs> High expectations for you, too. Do you feel like you got back on the same page tonight? Uh, we worked our kinks out a little bit. We still have to get a lot better, and we know that. But, um, you know, we, we offensively, we, we got playing a little better today, and uh, defense been playing well all year, and they played great again tonight. And uh, we got in a little rhythm tonight offensively, which was big for us. All right, Graham, congratulations on the win and the new record. Guys, I'm sure it's one of many Graham will set this season. Back up to you. All right, Emily. Well, I, I guess they got in a little rhythm. 693 yards of total offense for Texas Tech. Yeah, plenty of offense. And the defense chipped in well. Ruffin McNeil's got to be happy about his guys. Five interceptions on the evening, and good job there. So I think that Texas Tech is setting the stage for them to contend for the South Championship. So complete effort on both sides of the ball for the Red Raiders. Don't forget to join us next weekend. College football Saturday. All starts at 3 o'clock Central. Kickoff show followed by Arizona and UCLA. And then it's going to be Rice matching up with number eight with Texas Longhorns. Now for Gary Reese, Emily Jones, I'm Joel Myers. Thank you for joining us tonight in West Texas as the Red Raiders win in Lubbock easily. 43 to seven. You've been